Hello, hello, and welcome to Coffee Craft. I am your host, Anon Jr., and uh, today I hope to continue the fun because uh, I I caught the the last part of Medic's run there, and I would like to finish a project I started last week. Um, some foolish person told Rayast that if she put together the lamps, they would light them. Yeah. So my, so my goal today is to try to finish up uh, getting these lamps set up. Now, let, don't worry, they're, they're not on all the time, all the time. Uh, let me let me get back to the front. I probably need to get a couple more access points into the tunnel down here now. Because uh, we, we now have a very serviceable service area. And there's the raid. Hi, guys. You guys been having fun? Alright, so the idea is I need to finish getting this wiring down here to light up the lamps when that daylight sensor kicks in. Uh, normally that dot of redstone dust would be on top of the wool block, but um, I, I got tired of breaking and replacing the redstone dot every time I needed to test the lights. So uh, I, I went ahead and just put a lever there because I need to see where I'm at. And again, the idea is that that daylight sensor will trip when it starts getting dark out, and then lights will spring forth <laughs> and uh, at least bathe the uh, the pathways in a uh, wonderful glow of safety or moderate safety. I, I don't I don't know how much this is going to actually light up the community center, but uh, we'll see. I got a fair amount done last week. I got up to the uh, sugarcane gunpowder farm over there I got our walkway up to the nether portal I got our walkway up to the iron farm and around the corner to the church and the wool farm done I just need to get uh to get to cracking the problem is the problem is I've been lighting faster than Rayest has been digging and so now I'm going to have to uh, to switch to digging out the tunnel a little bit more too. There there was a, a minor a minor miscommunication, and uh, so she only dug out the the narrow spot under the lamps, not the space I need to actually do something under the lamps. And uh, yeah, we're working on that part too. Also. Gotta hide that gap. Mind the gap. What have you guys been up to? Tours and such? Yeah, no. I know a medic was in there a minute ago. Or did he stop and grab some coffee? I should. He probably went to go grab coffee. <laughs> I, I mean, don't hear what I'm not saying. There's nothing wrong with stopping to grab some coffee. I, uh,. I have some fresh brewed coffee myself. So do I. That's why it's called Coffee Craft. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> and whenever Rayest gets here, we really, really need to figure out where we're going to put the uh, coffee pot that we normally put up every season. Uh, this is true. We still haven't done that, have we? No, we still haven't done that. Do, do we call it the seasonal coffee? <laughs> I don't know. Are we doing a coffee pot or a caress or what are we doing this year? Um, I thought we were going to try to do a 3D version of the Coffee Craft logo this go round. Okay. I just don't remember if uh, we had definitely settled on that or uh, or there were some alternative plans. Don't either. So we'll have to wait for everyone to be here for that one. I guess. Yeah. Dig carefully. <laughs> My day's been going pretty well, Genesis. How about you? Yeah. 
this day is getting a little bit better now that we get a chance to play. It's been a rough day at work. Big hands, small violins, or? Ah, uh, that too. That too. And, and just uh, some confusion about instructions and whatnot. That can make for some stressful days. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you sound like the Kool-Aid man. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, I may sound like the Kool-Aid man, but I sure feel like either the Scarecrow or the Tin Man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope you like the tour. Uh, I know he got to the nether part because I, I was listening in on the tail end there. Did he... Uh... I don't think he finished the uh, the gold farm. I don't think he got to any of the uh, did... the pathways of the, the pork farm. Oh, did he get to the pig farm? Because that, that is kind of no. cool. Oh. No, I don't think okay. he did. All right. Um, <laughs> I like I said, I think he stopped halfway through the a... gold farm. Yeah, I definitely need to start putting a couple more access points in here. So I got to figure out where I'm going to hide them. Because uh, now I got to go to the east end of nowhere to, <laughs> to find my way back out. And since we're building all these tunnels for the redstone to light up all these lanterns. I'm tempted to see if there aren't other uses I can put this to. I mean, we've got it here. Why not? Why not put it to use? I'm not sure what we'd put it to use for, but when's that ever stopped us? Well, that's true, too. <laughs> All right. Hello, piggy. Don't look at me like that. Yeah, I heard Medic show off the gold farm and the Piglin Trading Hall. Uh, one of the more recent things, and the reason why I'm eating pork chops, is uh, this way. This is where Medic and Arcadius acquired the Piglins for the Trading Hall. And I built another farm over there. So, this small platform here is where Medic and Arcadius were hoping to get piglins to spawn. And this is a pork and leather farm. So, we got... Oh, I guess somebody raided the leather? Because we used to have more than that in there. And lots of cooked pork chop. Uh, for Rose and... Oh, somebody's been pulling from the top of the pile. Okay, that's fine. We, we we got we got a little bit of pork chops, and the way it works. Oh, come on, fly! So we've got this little platform here. Because it is located in uh, a crimson. Uh, I always struggle to find what I'm looking for on this. Uh, biome, biome, biome. There we go. On the left-hand side, uh, like if you're looking at where the little... I'm pointing at my screen like you can see. Uh, <laughs> if you're looking uh, below the, the light and the mobs where you see biome, Minecraft, Crimson Forest. Uh, Crimson Forest is one of the few places that the, uh, the hoglins spawn. And they spawn regardless of lighting level. So this is lit enough to allow only the hoglins to sp the hoglins to spawn, and they hate these warped mushrooms. So they will spawn on this platform, run away from the mushroom, into the center, uh, where they get cooked. So there's a little platform up here. Come on, come on, come on! Oh yeah, there we go. Like an expert. And in just a little bit, there we go. Oh, probably because uh, Medic was over by the farm. Um, when nobody's on, the rates are phenomenal. Uh, that what that yield you see was one one night AFK. Yeah, I, 
you know, I, I, I finished building it on stream, uh, went to bed, left myself logged in up here on the platform, and away it went. But anyway, they, they spawn there and they run into the fire because they think they can walk across the trap doors and they can't. So they're running from the mushrooms. They see the trap doors, a valid path to run away from the mushrooms, and uh, it's not. And then we get tasty bacon for days and days and days. Uh, the one catch is if you've got multiple people in the nether and they're on top of the roof, it causes uh, stuff to... Hello, beach duck. It, it causes um, mobs to fill up the cap underneath you. So this is best done when nobody else is on or nobody else is in the nether. But, uh, yep. Pork chops for days and days. I, I don't think we'll be running out ever this season. And just a little simple item sorter in the backside there. And we get a couple other paths over there, too. One goes to a witch farm that Arcadius built very early in the season. I want to say it was either the first or second farm built this season. Uh, was the spider farm first. first or the witch farm? It was the... The witch farm was the first one I built. Okay. Uh, we did not have the handy access of the nether roof, so it was a little bit of a trek. Somebody made a, a, a somewhat janky tunnel that uh, got you there safely, mostly. Uh, you're best best set to ride a horse and sprint. <laughs> it was a 10-minute run on yeah. horseback. Yeah. Hello, Beach Duck. How are you? <laughs> yeah. And uh, there we go. It's just your basic witch farm. You get your platform up there and... Uh, Spend a little time AFK and you get all the thing. Nope. Um, is it because there's mobs nearby? You won't let me sleep because there's mobs nearby, won't you? Fine. Fine. But, uh, yeah, it's your basic witch farm. And it produces all the fun stuff that witch farms produce. Including our uh, little miscellaneous, which last... Yeah, I, I don't know how the raw chicken got in there. That is the one mystery to me. The rest of the stuff I get. Uh, because the the spawn, the way the spawning set up, uh, it will unfortunately allow spiders. So you get the spider eyes and the string. Um, but, uh... Eh. It was a great mob farm. It was the source of a lot of our early game redstone. And, uh, oh, that tunnel entrance there that I'm zipping by, that was the long hike to and fro. Like, like, go ahead and lean something heavy on the W key while you go make a sandwich or something. Oh, wait, no, because it wasn't, it wasn't a straight line. And then I kind of, sort of had a, oh. Uh, it was, if I go east, was it west? Oh no. All right. Let's see if we can do this without getting lost. All right. I'm back. Sorry. Pay, pay no attention to the pillaged desert. We needed sand. Yeah, because I need it. Yeah, okay, okay. I think I got my bearings. Ooh, nighttime. Yep. Time to sleep. Too bad I'm flying. Eh. You don't have to sleep. Ah. Oh, oh, but I do have to wait for the world to render. That's how you discover mountains the hard way. Face planted <laughs> mountain. Been there, done that. <laughs> Yeah. It's Bought never the fun. T-shirt. I think I'm going in the right direction. Now I'm second guessing myself. 
I've flown this route so many times, except uh, now that we got the nether roof tunnel, I don't, I don't have to fly that route. I am genuinely... Is that the river? I think that's the river. Good, take me out to a bay. Oh! Oh, sweet! Thank you! Yes, I have. That makes follower 50. <laughs> oh, sweet. That is glorious. Congratulations. Oof. Congratulations, man. Oh, that that is awesome. That is makes awesome. A bad, huh? Oops, it makes a bad day at work better, huh? Oh, yeah. Yes, it does. Hey, when you were doing the tour, did you show off the uh, raid farm? Uh, no, I did not. This is something that Arcadius built a while back. Uh, I helped with a little bit of the land clearing and carpeting. Hi, guys. <laughs> and, and so this area was a pillager tower. Um, I still I kind of wish Arcadius made a safer <laughs> entrance and exit. But uh, I do appreciate that. Thank you very much. Um... Why the sudden netherrack? I was testing a different kill chamber for it. Oh, okay. Eventually one of the flag guys is supposed to fall in there and uh, you whack him, start a raid. There is a village. Um, here, let me switch over to camera. There's that one dude in his workstation. So he technically counts as a village. Uh, and he is the uh, the target for the raids as they arrive. Uh, we've also got up here a little breeding center because we kept losing this guy. And we were all kind of tired of um, dragging people all the way over from the... Uh, from, from the villager farm. Well, I wasn't tired of it. Oh, well, yeah. Cause, oh, the tree. I didn't have anything to do with that. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to figure out what's up with the server. Are, are, are we finally testing the limits of our, our server? Do, do I need to go buy a couple more sticks of RAM? This is my sad abandoned project. About this time last year, I had cleared <laughs> all this out <laughs> to build the uh, shiny emerald retirement home. It was going to be a giant villager trading hall and uh, some farms to, to feed said trades. And it, it was going to be a nice little complex and it was going to look all thematic. And uh, that, that's my little starter beach hut. At this point, I'm ready to just, you know, leave, leave that as my base. And, and you know, just, uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Genesis. Uh, I had to stash all my camels there because the drown were attacking them. <laughs> yeah, Genesis, I didn't. have a good night, buddy. I didn't and realize that. I didn't realize that drown attacked uh, trader, trader llamas. So if you get your llamas from Wandering Trader, um, the, the, the drowned attacked them. Who knew? <laughs> it's too funny. Yeah, have a good night, Genesis. I'll talk to you later. Take it easy. Hopefully you'll be able to join in uh, when we do this next week, too. How you doing? Oh, man. So, back to lighting. I was trying to switch some of these planks out for dark oak until I realized that we still got the bridge, too. I know Reyes wants all the steps to match. Actually, you know what? There we go. I can 
go all gimli on something with my axe if I need to. So, uh, how's your project progress going there, Medic? Uh, good. I have finally completely encapsulated the farm. Now I'm just working on the roof, make sure it's lit up pretty well, and uh, then I'll finish up the, the tower up to the AFK platform. Nice. And that's right, because you were going to build that all the way up to the platform itself. That's correct. Nice. I still get a. I still get to finish. Uh, I still get to finish a lot of things, but I get to finish uh, setting that up so that way. Um, the the crop farms end up working. Yeah, I saw how you're setting up the uh, the sorting system in there, and that's pretty cool. I think it's going to work out pretty well. Yeah, I'm I'm not sure how if I'm going to be able to route things the way that I want to though. I would like the storage to end up going in in that area, and then maybe send overflow uh, into a composter to turn into bone meal to feed the farms and try to get a little more uh, self feeding. Uh, down, down, down to Goblin Town. So, yeah, I want to collect all the beetroots and beetroot seeds and all that. Uh, I might rearrange the way these are because I'm hoping I can fit a few more, a few more chests than just three double chests in the assort, in the associated hoppers. Um but I might not be able to do that, sadly. And then I just got to figure out how I'm going to route the water stream and filtration. The problem is... Um, I ran out of room. Because to, to, <laughs> to build the filtration system, I'm going to be cutting into the lights. And, uh, mm. yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll see how that goes. I, I'm, I may, I may end up just, uh, doing separate hopper streams or something or, or sort it somewhere, like sort it over there and then send it on independent water streams to each of these later. That, that is an idea that I, I've been playing around with too. I also need to be careful that I don't run into the redstone for the uh, note blocks. Although I think that's... I seriously miss my toss. There we go. I think the, uh, the redstone for that is what I ran into over... No. Is that would be the entrance up there. All right, I don't, I don't know where the note block, note blocks would be. All right, anyway, I gotta light this area too. I know it's not where I was a minute ago, but I'm not sure that it. Oh. Okay, there's the step. There's the step. There's my light. These. Delightful and artistic uh, paths are less delightful to route redstone around. So I'm a straight lines and square corners kind of guy. Hopefully, this is enough sea lanterns for me. Um, yeah, did you see that I AFK'd for, uh, all, all the crystals and, uh, everything? Yeah, I saw we had quite a few more in there, which was awesome. Yeah. Hey, Beach Duck. Beach. Duck. <laughs> <laughs> you goof. <laughs> hey, 
Hey, Beast Lord. Thank you for the raid. Woot. Beast Lord. What's going on? I need to start making some coffee-themed emotes and whatnot now. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> hey, one wing and angel. Badges. Yep, badges. Hey. Badges and one all wing. that. I've been meaning to do some some coffee theme stuff for when uh, for raids and follows and things like that too. I've still got the Streamlabs default stuff going, and it's good. Don't don't hear what I'm not saying. Uh, you know, I just I want it better. It can be better. We can make it better. Hey, One Wing, how are you doing? Better. Good to yeah. see you this evening. You doing pretty good. I am still working on that lighting project for Rayest. Okay, I did put lanterns there. Okay. I also need to keep the light under here bright enough as well. Yeah, for those of you that are just joining the stream, uh, Mr. Anon has hit the follower status for affiliate. Finally. We are all super excited about that. Oh yeah. That that's that is an awesome feeling. Now comes the real fun. <laughs> <laughs> that climb to I don't even know what it is. What is it, seventy five? Uh Rayest, I uh, it's gonna take more than thirty minutes to finish your lights. Which I'm assuming is what you meant. Uh, I needed somebody else to finish uh, finish digging this out. Just <clears throat> <laughs> 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 you know saying, yeah, so, somebody wanted a lighting project and didn't, didn't dig out the tunnel. I'm just giving you a hard time. <laughs> oh, oh, you you're gonna dig. Deep into the jokes for that one. Um, yeah, for for the history behind that oh, one, ladies and gentlemen, oh, I refer oh, you to the one. live, the inaugural live stream for season one, and that's all I'm going to say about that. It can be found over on uh, my YouTube channel, <laughs> which is where all the live stream archives end up, as well as the uh, games revisited archives, which is my uh, my Friday stream. Where I play some classic games and have all sorts of fun with that. You know, at least you have amazing tools. <laughs> that's all. I, that's all I gotta say. Your your tools are absolutely amazing. Okay. 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 Hang on. I, I gotta. I gotta see if I still have it in my screenshots folder. Give me just a minute. And I'm hoping someday to have a set of tools myself that are as amazing as the tools that you have oh, where'd the link go <laughs> really where'd the link go oh <laughs> uh, uh, beast in one wing i'll give you one guess as to which tools we're talking <laughs> about but i think he's looking for it so <laughs> uh, i knew i should have had that ready dog on it Screenshots. That was. Oh man, I got a lot of screenshots for some reason. <laughs> I got a lot of screenshots for some reason. Nobody needs that many screenshots. Oh. Did I move to the archive? I can't find it. Oh. All right, I'll see. I'll see if I can locate the screenshot I have in mind at some point. Oh. <laughs> okay, I I'll let that one through. <laughs> that 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 was a little uh, that was a little aggressive of the auto mod. Oh no 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 no! There there it is. Okay, uh, let's go to special images. Let's hide everything there. So that way I can. 
<laughs> yeah, I. I oh, oh. Sometimes the auto thing grabs stuff that yeah. I'm just like, really? Yeah, sometimes why? It, why it, was that? <laughs> yeah. Just saw it. Oh, my poor ADD. I know I probably. I'm probably going to end up regretting it, but I went through and I. I turned off most of my auto mod stuff. Yeah. Well, that's why you have good moderators. Yeah, I, I figure between between uh, Beast and Arcadius, I have good enough moderators, and they know what I will allow, what I won't, that I don't really need it. Is the sign visible? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we were building out uh, the, uh, the the trading hall. <laughs> I didn't even know that you did that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, oh yeah. There you go, guys. And, and look. Somebody clip that. <laughs> it, 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 it gets even better. Look, that, that is still an in-joke from something that happened on the inaugural live stream for Coffee Craft Season 1. So if you really want to know the in-joke, go go find the Season 1 archive over on, over on my YouTube channel. And it, it's in the first 30 minutes. I'm pretty, yeah, yeah. It didn't take yeah, long. It's, it's very early in before, before things got rather fun. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you Woo. go. You guys whoa, whoa. now know what tool he's referring to. Fell out of the sky and... Okay, Icarus. Well, don't fly so high. Wow. I haven't broken a light in forever. <laughs> oh, oh, did you break... <laughs> Seriously? So you break a netherite pickaxe and then you break an elytra? Is, yeah. Is that what I'm hearing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's exactly oh, what okay. you heard. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Holy cow! Okay, well. <laughs> and I—I uh, I was saved by a, a little statue that I was holding. Oh, I'm oh yeah! I'm still alive. <laughs> I've been lucky. Every other time I've ever broken Elytra, like in season zero or in you know private games, I've always accidentally done it over water. Oh yeah. Uh, so <laughs> I, so far, I have not broken an Elytra yet. Uh that, that's why I got the totem in my offhand. Uh, Beast Lord, are you talking about the tunes when you walk through the door or just the background music? Because if it's the little uh, tunes that play as you go through the door, that is one of the things that Arcadius does so well. Uh, in this game, there are note blocks. You can actually tune it to uh, one of... I, I, is it two octaves? Three. three. There are three scales. Okay, so so it's a full scale for three octaves. And uh, you can even change the quality of the note based off of what block you put under the note blocks. Different instrumentation. So uh, so if you want it to sound more like a xylophone, you put a, blo a bone block under it. If you, you know, and that kind of thing. And there's a lot of different instrumentation you can get out of the note blocks. It's a really intricate and wonderful game feature like there are people that specialize in doing nothing but recreating midi tunes using note blocks in minecraft uh somebody did an absolutely amazing 1812 overture using note blocks and tnt for the cannon fire <laughs> like you, you sit in a minecart and you push the button and it starts the overture and moves you along because the number of note blocks needed to do the full 1812 overture is so massive, you have to move to 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 keep up with where the note blocks are playing. <laughs> <laughs> it is not something I it, I can load up on a server either. It, it's something you've got to run local because it is it's it's that intense. It will test your computer skills, your computers. Hmm. Yeah, it, it gets, it's fun. If he appreciates those and your sounds good enough, I think he would really like the church. Oh, 
Yeah, I can do that real quick. <laughs> the ADD is strong today, but that's okay. I'm having fun. Three or four. So this is my incomplete church. I haven't figured out roof building because uh, right up until this season, I mostly built underground or inside of mountains. And you don't have to worry about building a roof then. You just have to worry about the ceiling. Yeah, so we'll just... Yeah, it's great. And because Beach Duck wanted a duck, there, there's a giant uh, duck. <laughs> it's, it's a, a rubber ducky. Duck. It's not a cult. <laughs> it's not a cult. No, not a not cult. cult. Not a cult. It's a church. Legit. Yep. There are, there are even clerics in there for it. You know, yep. You... <laughs> See? There's clerics in your confessional booth. <laughs> What do you mean it's interesting for a church to have that? It's it's uh, it's hymnal music. I'd I'd actually like to know where the painting went to though. We're we're, we're missing a bit of wallpaper. Oh, uh, good question. That is part of our custom texture pack. Ray S put together a design and said, "Can can can you put this in the game for me?" No oh, no 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 no. That's not where it started. <laughs> Well, no. That... It started with her wanting me to do a mapping. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. That's that's fair. Uh, she wanted to do oh, a no, map version track. of that, and uh, the server said no. Okay, the server uh -huh. added, said no, but that's pretty close to the same thing. Well, you just ruined that for me. I sat there and thought this whole time that uh, that Arcadius made the whole map of that, and I uh -uh. was really super impressed. Do 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 you know how many? Do you know how many item frames and maps that would take? Our our, our poor little server, Four. blessed heart. Oh, it's a jubba. It would have only been oh. four. No, not for Reyes. It wouldn't have. No. Yeah, it's four See, blocks. This this is this is one mechanic in Minecraft that I, I would love to. Uh, change when you place down on painting it gives you a random one of the size the painting takes so you can't really pick which painting you just have to kind of keep putting it down and picking it up and until you get there we go until you get the one you want ah <laughs> uh. Well, if you're like other people whose dice like them, um, you, you get the one you want fairly quickly. If you're like me, who's probably some math student's thesis paper. Oh yeah, we, we got plenty of we got plenty of Java photos around here too. Uh, I added a couple of different pictures of him for uh, paintings, like that one right there. Because he's very careful not to lay. Oh wait, no. Uh, yeah, that was probably over by the couch. <laughs> oh, oh, this is gonna hurt. Which duck? That duck. Ouch. Because that's another map that Arcadius did. Um. <laughs> these. <laughs> That is yeah. 128 blocks mm -hmm. <laughs> by 128 yeah, blocks. It, it's essentially large-scale pixel art, 128 by 128, uh, for example. And I know I showed this on stream before, but it is just so massive and beautiful. And I think finished now, right? It is ready to be played. Anytime we get all four of us on and we actually want to sit down and play some uh, games. Uh, landing attempt number two. There we go. <laughs> so, sorry. I can't stand up. Then I'm in the clouds. <laughs> uh, that 
within the within the black border is one Minecraft map square. Yeah. So so when you saw that pixel art, that was one of these to make that giant <laughs> uh, duck and horse for Beach Duck and the Pink Geek, respectively. And I love the detail. Oh, I love this. The, the map for that is up on the table up there. So, any there of you who have played Settlers of Catan know exactly what this is about. I think I need to turn clouds off if I'm going to keep... Uh... <laughs> yeah, I was trying to figure out earlier how to mess around with the clouds to, to get them to go higher. I, I forgot how to do that. I, I know it's buried somewhere in the options. It's the it's the somewhere that gets me. Matter of fact, I'm not going to mess with that on air. I'll do that later. Although I don't like having the clouds. I just don't like being stuck in the clouds. Feels very Seattle. <laughs> so yeah, that map is that area that you can you can zoom out the map a little bit so that is one default map size you can actually zoom it out so that takes up what one quarter at the next zoom level um no if you zoom that map out right there mm -hmm. it'll take up one eighth one eighth okay i couldn't remember how far the zoom goes yeah and then there's one more after that, right? There's three levels of zoom. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so oh, I mean, yeah. you can you can make some effective maps. You just lose a lot of detail as you go. Um, I'm not sure where Pinky is. I haven't seen her on stream, or at least chatting on stream in a while. But I kind of figured that was due to living living La Vida retail. I, I I hear your schedules are unpredictable when you uh work retail for a living. It's just a rumor I heard. <laughs> Alright, let me uh, sleepy sleepy and then I'll get back to the actual task at hand and do some lighting. Because that is a project I will be happy to have finished. In, in no small part because of the safety. I, I think, it, I can't remember if it was on one of Medic streams or one of Beast Lord streams. We were actually talking in chat a little bit about the mechanics. And uh, the way the way Minecraft works, I'll pull up the, the F3 screen, the details. If you look, um, all right, let me center this so that way. You see at the top left of the light where it says facing east and then you see client light 15 and server light 15. Uh, each, every block has a light level between 0 and 15. 15 being full light, 0 being completely dark. And the way Minecraft works is this block will be 15, so that one's 14, that one's 13, that one's 12, that one's 11, that one's 10, and so on, as you move away from the light source, provided there's no other one. And if you have a spawnable surface, that's one of the asterisks that it is relevant for later discussions. If you have a spawnable surface with a light level below 7, Hostile mobs will spawn. So that means zombies and skeletons and creepers, oh my. Um, if we can light up this area so that way all the areas that we tend to go are above 7. I can't remember if it's at 7 and above or above 7. So I usually just plan for above 7 and that way I'm right or pleasantly surprised, whichever the case may be. Uh... And that's part of what this project is for. The idea is that uh, I'll get that redstone set up so it'll be tied to a daylight sensor. So when it turns night, 
the lights will turn on and keep stuff from uh, blowing us up when we're least expecting it as we walk down the hallway. That's the plan. We'll see how well that works out. So that lever will get replaced with that redstone dot. And when that daylight sensor detects that it's nighttime, it'll turn on all the lights. I'm hoping all this redstone is not part of the reason why we're having some special server time. Or why the server is being special. I think that works either way you put it. All right. So I need a torch there. All right, let's do this. Nope. I need a couple other items out of my box here. Uh, you don't have to do this, but I try to put down something obvious when I, I'm building building stuff that has. <laughs> Uh, redstone components, so that way when you're digging or moving stuff around, you don't accidentally break something that uh, was really, really kind of important. Alright, so when that turns... Oh, never mind. Uh, when that turns off, that block will be powered, which will power that redstone, which will power that repeater, which will power that one there, and light up those three. Okay. <coughs> mm-hmm. Uh, of the server, I do tend a little bit more towards these kinds of projects. If you want an interior decorated, go, go ask Medic. Uh, <laughs> I kind of... Not kind of. I, I, I wish... We had easier portal access to your old base, but I did we did we ever establish a uh, new presence on the roof? Uh, yes, but I didn't mark it out. Ah, okay. Yeah, well, we'll I have to... I have the coordinates written down, but I didn't I didn't actually lay down slabs out to it. Yeah, we'll have to get that marked out because Medic's old base, he did an amazing interior design. And it, it is just, it is awesome. It is well worth the fly out there. Uh, but that's also why every time we get uh, mini blocks and that kind of thing, we, we tend to drop him Medic's mailbox. Sometimes he even picks them up. Yeah, so I've got some in there. <laughs> I've got to go get. Uh, yeah. And of course, it's always fun trying to do this with the llamas yurking up there and all that. Is that is that the proper? Is it yurking? Like, like what's the what's the net, what's the verb for the sound a llama makes? Uh -huh. <laughs> That's, that's there you go. That that's the verb sound. That, that, that's the verb sound. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that that's helping. <laughs> In what country? <laughs> you, you you just you're just referencing. Uh, you know what did the fox say? Aren't you? Is that a? Uh, are you referring to an African llama or a European, European llama? llama. Well, I don't know that. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Holy grail. Oh, man. Oh, that's what we need to do. We need to see if we can get one of those Amazon watch party thingies going with uh, Monty Python and Search for the Holy Grail. I, I don't know if that's that's available on the list or not. That would be pretty funny. That that could be really fun. You know, I, I really want to be surprised that there's a YouTube series about nothing but the uh, the different sounds that animals make from di from the perspective of different countries. I want to be surprised. I really, really do. 
I'm somehow not surprised. I can't pick on you for actually watching it because then I'd have to reveal some of my own watch history. Uh, the duck sounds like taco. Actually, now I could go for some duck tacos. All the randomness. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh. Well, that is going to be interesting. How am I going to get the... How am I going to get this around that corner there? All right. A dot of redstone there. A couple of repeaters there. I am going to come back later and put wool under each of those. I just, I, I can only carry but so much. Rayest, 99.9% .9 of the time, your opinion really does matter. It really does because you're an amazing person. But when it comes to meat, <laughs> your opinion doesn't matter. <laughs> Duck tacos are awesome. <laughs> I mean, it depends a little bit on which onion they put with it, but yeah, duck tacos are amazing. <laughs> I, I'm trying to remember if it's in uh, Burville or Harrisburg. I, the, the, the lines get a little blurry, but my cousin has a uh, taco shop that has some amazing tacos. Huh? What'd you say? Did, did Raya say something? I, I don't... She says, uh, you say my opinion matters, and yet 99.9% .9 of the time you guys don't listen to it until after you've done the opposite and found it didn't work. Now, Reyes, if you look in your uh, in, in what you just posted, <laughs> then you've already answered that conundrum right there with the word guys. <laughs> What, what, what guy do you know ever listen when you're right about something? Um, Guys are notoriously known for not listening. Okay. I, when... I, I, I will hesitate to, to make one small adjustment to your statement. Uh, have you met her employees? Because <laughs> they have met with her look. And so her employees do, in fact... Listen very attentively. Uh, some of them, it took a little bit before they listened attentively, but they soon learned the errors of their ways. I'm just saying. Well, the the point is, is that they didn't listen until <laughs> they did the opposite and found out it didn't work, and then they listened. Yeah, they, they, that's what guys do. There, there's a, there's a couple that it took a little a little longer than you know Jubba did to learn to listen. <laughs> If I put, I put the torch there. Yeah, that'll get all three of those. Good. How am I gonna power it? Yeah, Jabba listens very intently. He's listening right now. Do 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 you not see his ears perk up every time somebody says the name Jabba? <laughs> That's because in dog language, J Java is food. So all he hears is food, 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 <laughs> food, orange sticks. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> yeah. Um. So you had a reason for teaching us that. Like... Yeah, yeah. I, I don't even know where to begin with that one. Um, for for the benefit of the crowd, Reyest is, is at her previous job was one of the managers noted for training the most people who became managers elsewhere in the company. And uh, so now several of her people have come back and gone, oh man, now I know why you made us do that. Like, yeah, of course that's why. Of course there's a reason why. Did you think it was just for fun? Hmm. 
This is some ugly redstone here. I, I just want to point that out. Alright, I need to... I need to empty inventory space. No. Uh, there we go. Can I toss in there? Oh, actually, no, because I'm going to need more chiseled stone anyway, so. Bam. Okay. was it they were talking on cord killers I wanted to uh, I wanted to bring that one up oh that's gonna be one of those things that I don't remember until after the streams over or something isn't it is it something with the the plans that Marvel has going right now it might have been I, I know there's some new Oh, uh, well, yes, he was supposed to do that, too. And, and since I know exactly what you're talking about there and can't remember what it was I was trying to remember from Cord Killers, um, Medic was supposed to <laughs> ask me about my failure to save because uh, I was ribbing him a little bit about saving on uh, his Final Fantasy VII stream yesterday. Oh, yeah. Um, you see, <clears throat> what happened was... I love how the stories start like that. Sunday. I was supposed to just spend a few hours doing prep for Friday's Games Revisited stream and then spend the rest of the time clearing off my bench because I'm supposed to be building a kit guitar right now. Um, more on that in a minute. And, well, I was busy, busy making sure that everybody's equipment was in order, that I had all the upgraded everything, so I'm crafting armor upgrades, crafting weapons upgrades, going through going through all the details, you know, all right, I need to make sure that you have this and you have that. Um, <clears throat> and then, and no and then, and then, The game crashes. Three hours. Three hours of level updating and crafting and making sure that everything is just as it needs to be. Gone. I only had one, two crewmates left to finish uh, taking care of. I mean, I had saved. It had just been a while. So th <laughs> three hours worth of leveling gone down the drain. <laughs> yeah. 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 You want to talk does about... does not sound like fun. You want to talk about a sad anon? No, I didn't quit the ridge. Uh, I, I did take a small breather, though. <laughs> I know what you meant. I, I, I'm contractually obligated to give you a hard time. Didn't you know that? Um, you probably shouldn't have put that in there, either. I'm just gonna say that, you know... Beach Duck probably won't appreciate you sitting there uh, openly admitting to uh, talk to texting while driving while listening to the live stream. I'm just going to throw that one out there. Um, where are these lights going? I'm lost. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> I, I I don't 
I don't think that makes it any better. I really don't think that makes it any better. <laughs> I'm just gonna say I don't I don't think that's helping anything. <laughs> oh, it's always fun oh. watching the uh watching siblings tattle on each other, especially <laughs> on live stream. <laughs> So this line of light. <laughs> See, Beach Duck, I'm the good kid. <laughs> this line only goes up to here. And then we go over a couple and it picks up here. Alright, 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 alright. I know where I'm at now. No, I don't. Yes, I do. Why am I doing this the hard way? Let's go one, two, three. It <laughs> never a dull moment. No, indeed. Uh, and if you only knew what game, game nights were like when uh, when nobody else was watching, we 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 can get we can get to a little bit of a ruckus, a small ruckus, a bespoke ruckus. All right, have fun. Thank you for coming by. Thank you for the follows, because I do believe that is the one that pushed me over to 50. Mm -hmm. Have a good night, Genesis. Take care, Genesis. All right, so this is going to go up one more. Definitely drop that one there. Thank you, Rast. Now, now I need to maybe to you know. I think I might finally have a day off banked up in my uh, time off. Might just use that to do nothing but work on uh, <laughs> on setting up uh, alerts <laughs> and emotes and such. I think you should. <laughs> yeah. girl. You deserve a you deserve a day to have some fun. really want to do it like that all right one corner at a time one corner at a time mm. um i hesitate to ask this knowing exactly <laughs> where and how you're going to answer but does this last lantern have to be up next to the step here hang on let me run the long way around again I think I might just make an executive decision and uh, move a lantern. Yeah, please don't tell me that you're looking for the top while, while doing what you're doing. Does that lantern have to be there? <coughs> or can I move that here? I'm going to move that there. Do I not have a dirt block? I thought I had a dirt block. There we go. Wow, I just realized I'm going to need a whole lot more cyan concrete than I thought. What? You, how much did you think that was going to take? Oh, and are you going to do the, uh, are you going to do the end rods all the way up the stripe? Yep. So, uh, uh-oh. Repair stuff? Good luck with that. Oh, are you talking about this one here? Yeah, I can definitely, I can definitely uh, get that weird lamp that's there out. That makes life easy, even easier. 
There we go. Well, especially since our Field of Dreams here is going to get remodeled before too long anyway, isn't it? Uh, yep. You know, this wouldn't be a bad spot for another decorative pond, too. That that could that could make a very nice decorative pond there. Oh, there's rest. Now only walk walking while streaming instead of uh <laughs> Oh man. Alright. I still wish I knew why it was six thirty three that you could go to sleep at. You cannot sleep any earlier than that. Later than that, you can. But 6.33... Uh, seems to be the magic limit. I just don't... I don't quite get that one. Alright. Back to the lighting. Our poor server. I can hear it struggling to play the notes. that I can drop that right there. Fill this corner back up because I no longer need to light any of... Well, okay. Hang on. I need that coal. I don't I don't need need that coal, but I can't... I can't bear to leave resources behind. I mean, we, we could be literally overflowing with anything and I feel completely compelled to uh, make sure none of it is left behind all right yeah, part of what makes this project interesting is every one of these bits of redstone dust that I have to do to make some of these corners happen that's going to introduce just a little bit of extra lag. I just, I don't know of another way. I don't know of another way of doing that. You see, when the daylight sensor senses that it is daytime and not night, because there's two modes. There's one where it senses, it uh, produces power when there's daylight, and one where it produces power when it's nighttime. This is set up to produce power when it is daylight. So when it's daylight, that is going to power the redstone dust that will be where that lever is, which powers that wool block. That repeater takes the power from the wool block and powers this one, which turns off the torch. And these two pull from that block to do that one and turn off that torch and etc, etc, etc. Once that wool is powered, it's also going to power this neighboring bit of redstone, which will then get pulled in either direction. But the way the game calculates items getting powered and that kind of thing um, makes that more than moderately interesting. And actually, no, I'm kind of curious. I probably should have checked this out earlier, but uh, I do wonder. Okay, so you can. All right. Good. Because uh, a sea lantern cannot be powered, and I wonder. I wonder if that would actually help stop the lag problem with uh, all these bits of redstone dust is to put something that can't be powered underneath them. Hmm. I'll have to think about that. I might have to write uh, one of the other... one of the more technical Minecrafters. If you really, really want to get into more than you ever thought you could know about how Minecraft mechanics work, there's a YouTuber by the name of Il Mango that uh, he he 
let me back up. There are different kinds of Minecrafters. There, there's the creative builders that, that put the game in creative mode where you have every item in the inventory and an infinite amount of them. And they build, they just build stuff. They build buildings, they build statues, they build scale models of the Colosseum. And it's gorgeous and it's beautiful. And that's, that's their thing. For them, Minecraft is a building game. And that's all they do is they, they, they play in creative and build absolutely fantastic things. Um, Pearlescent Moon is one of the really big ones in that space. Uh, and she does some absolutely fantastic stuff. Uh, some people are technical players. They get deep into the game's code. Like, they know that the game revolves around these things called ticks. It's the internal clock that triggers events in the game. So one game tick happens and then the, the game goes, okay, a new second has passed. Let me check this. Let me check this. Let me check this. Let me check this. To the point that they have detailed understanding of the order of operations for every aspect of the game. And they know that if you really want this to happen faster, you do a comparator and then a repeater instead of a repeater and then a comparator because the comparator gets checked first and then the repeaters get checked and, and like that level of technical detail. Um, I, I don't remember which one gets checked first. I just know that one of them get is higher in the order of operations. So if you want things to work in, in a, to, to the utmost efficiency, and yes, Il Mango is German, uh, his German is slightly impenetrable at times. Um, but he is that level of technical player. Uh, and there's various people all between those two extremes. Like you get uh, B00 and Green. Uh, they are builders, but they do they, they do building in survival which is what we're doing where you got hunger and health and you got to worry about stuff spawning and, and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, they build, oh, I have trouble crawling out of the hole. So they build things like this, like what Reyes does in survival. And, and, and they, uh, except some of them, because this is their, their day job, they really build some amazing and large and fantastic things. Uh, stuff that takes us a couple of weekends that they, they manage in a day or two. But that uh, that is their job. So uh, I, I, I kind of have different expectations than I would for us. Um, but they, they get into that level of building. Um some people get into redstone the 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 electrical engineering of minecraft and and this is closer to where i tend to play the game <laughs> the note blocks i love it uh, so so they start building more of the the devices and things like the tree farm uh like the creeper farm and they play with the game mechanics not necessarily for the most brutally optimal version of whatever that is but pretty darn close to it and that's kind of that's kind of the area that i like playing so i like doing this kind of stuff where i'm digging out trying to figure out uh how am i going to get all the lamps powered down this way uh Some of the concerns that I used to worry about, I, I didn't have to when it was a local server. Like, Reyes, Arcadius, and I used to play for a long time before we started streaming on a local server. I had a spare laptop or an old desktop or something set up on the home network. And, uh, and then we would just, you know, log into the local world and play. 
and, and th- there's a lot you don't have to worry about when it's not going over the internet. Um, lag is <laughs> lag is a lot less problematic. But then we wanted to start doing stuff with uh, you know medic, and we hope to invite a couple other people before too long. Uh, we just wanted to make sure that we we get a better handle on doing what we're doing now before we started expanding out who's who's joining our little world. I forgot where I was going with that. I was going somewhere. Uh, what, I'm sorry. That probably somewhere with server maintenance. Oh, um. So right now we're using a server from Cube Toast, which has been absolutely fantastic. If you are looking for a way to host a Minecraft world and you don't want to have to deal with memory management and startup scripts and all the other stuff that goes with managing a server, like an actual server, um, go go to Cube Toast. That they are pretty reasonably priced. Uh, right now, we are on a one of their smaller server packages. I, I want to say it's only got about four gigs of RAM, um, which is a little bit different because the local server that we were playing on had uh, 16 gigs of RAM. And, and since Minecraft runs off of Java, it... Um, it, it, it's it, it's hungry. It's thirsty. It's hungry for memory, <laughs> like Java is hungry for treats. There is no such thing as enough. If it were possible to personify a server, it would be like the day somebody left the the food unlocked, and a house guest found Java head first in the food bag because the door was unlocked. <laughs> Forgot that happened. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He in the middle of the night, just, you know, crunch, 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 crunch. What is it? It's Java head first in the food bag because the door was locked and the bag was open. Or the door was unlocked and the bag was open. Oh, that puppy. Sometimes. He's amazing. Oh, yeah. He is amazing. There's Rast. There, Katie's. Where are you? Working. You were out here helping me with water. Where did you go? To a different project. You abandoned me? Oh. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Quick, quick, quick. We all need to take an owl by walk. Give your phone to Jubba and send him off for a while. That way the GPS thinks you're... <laughs> Why did you abandon me? Because I have projects to do. <laughs> I don't think that was the right answer. I'm reasonably Negative certain right that was not the right answer. I didn't know this was multiple choice. <laughs> Trust your friends. That was the wrong answer. <laughs> there, um. hmm. Get that one stupid light. It does not want to light up. Hmm. Because that torch... Is lighting up that one, that one, and that one. I need to either power this guy directly or power this block next to him. What is... Oh, that's probably bad. Yeah, because there's water around here. Digging straight up when there's water around is not good. Water washes out redstone and redstone components. Um... Literally, it breaks it off the ground and pushes it to wherever the water flows and leads to uh, to crying Minecrafters. There, there, there's been no, much just crying redstoners. There's much, been much wailing and gnashing of teeth, so to speak. 
Oh no, where did all of my- oh, I know where it's at, never mind. And you didn't even want to, like, at least bring this stuff back to base? Oh, I didn't think we were done. <laughs> I left you to go do other projects, um, but I didn't think we were done. Oh, I was in the middle of the stream. I was hey, hey, doing a server tour. Hey, hey medic, do you, do you want yeah. to uh, just pass the front of the uh, community center? You, you're gonna build a bus and put a little armor stand Arcadius getting run over by it? I should. Because I, 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 I feel like that should be some art somewhere around here. I don't know where, but somewhere around here should be a Minecraft bus and Arcadius getting run over by it. Yeah, that, that, that was fun. That, that, that feels about right. How crucial is it that this tree is right here? Because, like, if I could straighten out this... Not like, at all. <laughs> like, if I could put a like lamp where crucial? that tree is and get rid of these two lamps here, that would make life... Not for serious, like, zero okay. crucial. I was just working around the train and trying to move as little of what was set up as possible. Medic, do you, do you, do you mind that this tree gets, like, moved back? A block. Uh, 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 which one is that? Oh, no. Okay. No, the only reason I put it there is because we didn't have really anything over there, and I just wanted it for decorations. Okay. Is uh, there such a thing as a poo fish farm? A poo fish? Poof. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Puffer. Don't Puffer? I think so. There, 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 there are puffer fish farms. No, oh, okay, that was wrong. Uh, also, inventory. All the inventory problems. <laughs> is is there a reason why you're trying to make a puffer fish farm? I wasn't trying to make one, but somebody said he needed it for something, something, oh, I something. I need two. No, I'm good. Potiony thing, somethings. No, no, I only need two. Thanks. The dead ones I need a ton of for potions, but uh, the living ones I only need two of. Uh oh. No. Uh oh. No. 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 About no. Med Medic just said he'd be right back. Oh. <laughs> that uh oh. No, I was thinking about doing a uh, motion sensor on the door into the base of the uh, okay. lava thing. And on, when you said you needed lots of coral, could you clarify that statement? Uh... A shulker of each color. Is that I I just enough? no. I I just wanted to fill up storage because the wandering Yahoo kept coming around and was looking for for trades. <laughs> so so he kept looking for mini blocks and there was no there was no coral to trade with them. I had no coral with them. Wow, I'm surprised you let that one just slide by. Sorry, things are trying to kill me. But it's broad daylight. Oh, mm, it's the drowny guys. Oh. Okay. Well, that that is a little different. I mean, I don't know that we need to hang a lantern from the birch tree if we're gonna build a row of lanterns around it but it's aesthetics sure
No, is it not going to let me do that from underneath? Okay. <sighs> Round we go again. Now, I do, I do hope that this lighting... I'm curious to see where this leaves leaves our lighting needs. Oh, I want to see your whatchamacallit map once we're done. The whatchamacallit map? I yeah. love whatchamacallits. The the map with the pink stuff that shows the Nene sadness. Oh, oh, the lighting map? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that that is on the that is on the agenda. Um pink mask of Nene stuff. Um what Reyes is actually referring to is over in resource packs. I found one by Dremen Over that highlights the if the light level is low enough that all the evil things spawn. So remember how earlier we were talking about lighting levels and if it's uh, 7 or below or below 7, I can never remember which... Um, bad stuff, you know, spiders and creepers and zombies, oh my, uh, will spawn. So this will highlight those blocks where the light level is low enough for that sort of stuff to spawn. It's a really nice, uh, really nice way to check, um, to check whether or not, uh, you've got bad problems about to happen. My only my only beef with the way the pack is set up is it doesn't it doesn't take into account whether a block is spawnable or not. Like if the game's trying to figure out if a zombie can spawn, it looks and it sees a grass block and it goes that is a spawnable surface and then goes through the rest of the checks. But if it's oh, trying to spawn one over here, it looks and sees that is a bottom slab. So it's a half slab and it's on the bottom half of the block. That is not a spawnable surface. So it won't spawn there. So one way to, to make your uh, living area safe from bad things is to crank up the light level. Another way is to make sure that your floor is not made of spawnable blocks. If you've seen me do the tour of the Guardian Farm, you'll notice that in addition to more sea lanterns than anybody should ever place anywhere, I, the entire floor is made of glass. Glass is not a spawnable block. So no matter what the light level, nothing is going to spawn there because it's a glass floor. Um, so part of this project with the lights is for the looks. Part of this project with the lights is to reduce the number of places that zombies and creepers and spiders, oh my, will spawn when uh, it turns night and nobody sleeps. <clears throat> like rest. And anytime you have a project that combines no stubby stabby and pretty, that's a happy day. Yeah, Rayest is uh, one of our one of our building building types. Because remember, I mentioned that some people were the more technical, doing the redstone. Some people were more uh, the decorative, and some people some people really thrive on making pretty things pretty. Um, Reyes likes making symmetrical and pretty things. Why did you make a redundant statement? Well, some some people do like asymmetrical things. And some people do cocaine. <laughs> that's wow. That, that that's that's a little that's a little bit of a jump there. <laughs> like, wow. I mean, these I, are decisions. Some people make them. I, I, I'm just like, like, how how did we get from here to there? I I. Yeah, we, we Welcome just like to how my brain works. jumped into the hard stuff there. Like, mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. So that happened. All right. Uh, 
No, you didn't come through on that last part. <laughs> I said, wow. You know, no pass go. Don't collect $200 over there. <laughs> yeah. This is news. No, nah, well, it's not new. <laughs> it's news to some of the new people, but... Dude, stop stabbing my face. Where are you that are, you're getting stabbed by the drowning people? I'm in a coral, pondy, oceany place. Um, you didn't even think drown spawn in coral. Oh, yeah. Well. Yeah, they can. They think my face is Nami, so they're here. <laughs> and I don't appreciate them. You gonna steal somebody's trident from them? I don't know that I've ever owned a trident. Well, you've owned one. Yeah, you had one last season. Yeah. Yeah, I put it in my storage unit. Well, yes, and you also took the really nice armor and put that in your storage unit, and, and just kind of left all the good, you know. Never mind. Put put all the good <laughs> armor that. Your good server mates gave you. Your nice server mates gave you. And just kind of tossed it in storage and never used it. <laughs> Welcome back, Beast Lord. You, you, you just missed me giving Reyes a little bit of a hard time. Because... Stop it, my face! <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> She's apparently having some trouble with uh, Drowned over where she's at. <laughs> uh, you know, we need to find a trident for her. I don't even have uh, a trident yet. <laughs> I think uh, you and uh, Banana are the yeah. only two that have them. Yeah, we might be the only ones. And even then, that's only because uh, I, can, I got them by a ridiculous accident. Because it is a matter of odds. Uh, in the Java edition of Minecraft, which is what we're playing, uh, the Drown have a random chance to spawn with a Trident. And the Java edition is a lower percentage chance than the Bedrock edition. Uh, and then there's a small percentage chance that they will actually drop it. Like, ridiculously small. Like, single-digit percentage small. Um, so, the fact that I actually got two tridents... It is moderately amazing. I have a question. Okay. I have an answer. What's the difference between Bedrock mm -hmm. and the one that we do? A... And okay. B, why do we do the one that we do? Uh, we do the one that we do because we always have. <laughs> we, we, we were playing this before there was two different editions. Uh, we still do it because uh, Java Edition is the one that supports the data packs and that sort of thing. So for us to have the, the villagers with the custom voices and all that sort of stuff, you uh, you have to play. You have to play this version. You have to play the Java version. Oh. Okay. The Bedrock Edition is what started... I don't even know where to begin with that one. Because it started life as the... Pocket Edition for Pocket PCs and mobile things like uh, the Nintendo DS and Nintendo Switch and uh, there was the console edition for Xbox and the console edition for the PlayStation and, and various and sundry different, slightly different versions that all finally got consolidated into the Bedrock Edition. Um... And I think it's Microsoft's intent to eventually consolidate it down to the Bedrock Edition, period. Like, there's the Bedrock Edition, full stop. Um, 
I think that is their long-term intent. But I don't I don't think they'll ever get there until they get the issue of feature parity put together. And they've been working on to their credit, they've been working on it. And it has been getting better, but um, like Redstone works differently in Java and Bedrock. So if you're trying to find somebody's Redstone tutorial for building a particular type of farm, uh, you do need to make sure that it is for Java or Bedrock or both because not everything works in both. Yeah, there, there's stuff that works fine in both because it takes uh, like the, the creeper farm that we have for gunpowder. Uh, that That you can build in either one because it's taking advantage of mechanics that are the same across both of them. Uh, some of what I'm doing here would actually be a little bit easier in Bedrock because of the way power works there. Um, things get powered a little bit differently, and some of the other some of the other things like our storage system, that would not work in Bedrock because, again, of some of the differences in the way Redstone works. I think we need signs in our underground tunnels. And access hatches. I, I just realized I, I'm lost turning around while talking. Well, I could come look at that, and I would be done with what I'm doing if I had some help, but apparently... <laughs> Uh-oh. Hey, I hey, get abandoned. Hey, Medic, about, the, about that bus with an armor stand Arcadius under it. To other prettier, cooler, younger projects. <laughs> <laughs> wow. wow. What? Ooh. Ooh. Mm. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Don't don't mind me. I'm just gonna be over here placing blocks. Yep. Yeah, I'm, I'm just working on concrete. <laughs> yep. Yep. Oh, and and, and yeah, just because uh, just because some people do are one particular type of player, like a technical player, and other people uh, do pretty buildings, Rest did build our concrete machine in both season zero and season one. Yeah, but I had to watch my own tutorial from season one <laughs> to build it this season. <laughs> Yeah, we, we did a... So we, I don't know that that fully counts yeah, when we, you watch we, your own tutorial to do a thing. We did a season zero uh, as kind of a training season uh, just to get used to live streaming and uh, fix weird issues like microphone stuff. Uh, th there's a couple of video, a couple of live stream archives that I don't have posted publicly because it was while I was still trying to get all the audio stuff set up and the audio is horrible. It's so horrible. Uh, it, it's all fuzzy and like I, the only thing that would have made it worthwhile is if I had opened up going, uh, you know, doing the intro to Beastie Boys Intergalactic because um, it was about that level of fuzzy voice just because I, I had an absent minded moment and forgot how audio drivers worked. Um. Well, and we were new and we were learning and oh my goodness, we were learning that my uh, natural vocal range and technology do not communicate with each other. Yeah, yeah. Because um, Reyes had an MXL 990, the same microphone that I'm using now. By the by, if you're trying to figure out an inexpensive microphone for live streaming and your voice is pitched within a certain range, an MXL 990 is an amazing microphone. It is a solid condenser microphone. You can set it up for close like what I'm doing. You can set it up for a little bit further away, uh, which I don't do mostly because uh, some people have mentioned that I, I type with a little extra vigor, and I don't want that showing up <laughs> on, on the microphone. I heard that. Hmm. Oh, a little. Yeah, just a little. He sounds mad. I do not sound mad. You type like you were yelling at people. I, no, 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 no. You, uh oh, um, you, you, you've, you've not heard me when I'm typing. Actually, angry. I, I just you wouldn't like me when I type angry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just take solace in that I, I'm not the only one. Uh, Tom Merritt apparently get, from the Daily Tech News show also gets uh, some people asking him if he's okay when he's when he's typing 
Yeah, that it's kind of like with me and my gamepad. My my hand sticks to it sometimes, and I'll lift my hand up to do something else, and you'll just hear it. You'll hear that, and that's all I get. You okay? All right. Oh, that is amazing, Arcadius. Thank oh. you. Oh, and he just stepped away. Oh, uh, he finished my map for my uh, my guest room. Ooh, nice. It looks amazing. I'll have to come look at that in a bit, or Anon can go do that. But anyway, what we're talking yeah. about is the MXL 990 is great for, like, people in a typical to lower voice range. But if your voice range naturally falls in a soprano... Which mine does. I don't know that it's actually in real life, if anyone were to speak, exactly as high pitch as it sounds recorded. Yeah. And I don't usually have to talk as forcefully in real life <laughs> as I do on these well, because they I aren't mean, really made to pick up. Well, unless I'm yelling at people. I, I've seen some um, new staff meetings. According to my team, they are far more scared when I am quieter than when I am loud. As well they should be. <laughs> yeah, you know, I I can understand that. You know, whenever I say something on Coffee Craft and I don't hear you respond, I feel the stare. Okay, so know when you are buying mics, if you guys are interested in this or start doing it, that your vocal pitch does change what mic is appropriate for you. Yes, very much Because we found so. that out the hard way. Um, some some microphones are built for a wider frequency response. So, you know, do do be prepared to shop around a little bit. Um, find Find people who have a vocal range similar to yours. And see, you know, see what they use. Because, again, if you get a pitch somewhere between uh, mine and Arcadius's in that range, MXL 990 is great. Um, and, and even a bit outside of that range in either direction, uh, the MXL 990 is amazing. The, the only thing is, is that because it is an XLR microphone, uh, meaning this cable here, <clears throat> this cable here is an XLR cable, uh, three prongs in a circle it's the type of cable that it is uh, you will need some sort of audio interface to plug into your computer so if you really want to get high-end streamer you can get uh, one of the Elgato stream decks and that handles that and some of the other stuff that I've managed to uh, find lower budget alternatives to um, and it does and it does that amazingly I, I should add, um, I am using a Scarlet 2i2 by Focusrite, and it has been it's been perfect for what we're doing. And I don't I don't see myself changing away from that anytime soon. I know a lot of podcasters that's that's just all they use is the Scarlet 2i2. Um, in particular, I, I know I mentioned the Daily Tech News Show a lot, but it is a podcast that I follow. Uh, I love, I highly recommend, uh, especially for keeping up on consumer technology and that kind of thing. Um, both Tom and Sarah use different versions of the Scarlet series from Focusrite. Uh, I think Tom uses the 2i2 and Sarah uses the, uh, the Solo. Because the, the difference is the number of inputs. The 2i2 has two inputs into it, so I can run the microphone and a guitar. Uh, so I can run a cable from one of the amps behind me into the Focusrite and uh, record that. That's how I plan on recording the sound demos for the guitars I'm building. Which, uh, oh, and that was one of the things that I wanted to get into before I forgot again. Uh, Crimson Guitars did a guitar building contest called the Great Guitar Build-Off. That was one of the big events of 2020 for them. Basically, <laughs> halfway through the lockdown, uh, the founder of Crimson Guitars was feeling kind of... Uh, sad. Sad. Yeah, sad works. 
and, and you know, between the events and just the way the way everything's been going, he he, he was feeling kind of sad. So he decided to contact some of the other YouTubers and whatnot in the guitar building community and and <coughs> do a contest. You know, a guitar building contest. And it turned into a fantastic thing. Uh, when he announced the contest and the people who were going to be in it, uh, a bunch of people apparently asked to be in an unofficial build-off, and it turned into a huge, amazing thing. Um, so big. Like, almost bigger than the original? <laughs> uh, not almost. It was bigger than the original. Like, I, I want to say he said there was 190, 197 people entered. 186 actually completed their guitar. And so 180, 86-ish people built guitars over the September, October, November time frame uh, for part of this contest. And it was wonderful. Uh, so to encourage more of that sort of stuff. Okay, that's where I'm at. Uh, and also, this is not like just for luthiers. Like a lot of these were like first time builders, yeah. enthusiasts, people who did a kit build and just painted it pretty. Like, yeah. so it didn't this, have this to is, be this like is, OMG yeah. epic luthier to do it. This was all levels from people just getting a plank of wood and carving away everything that's not a guitar uh, to <laughs> to people who got kits like the one behind me that I still haven't opened because I got to get the uh, I got to get the recording stuff set up so I can do the the big unboxing of the kit um, so yeah all levels and and, peop and not just people with professional level gear too that that's one of the things that really kind of struck me with some of the stuff is um, one of... There was a dude who built in a dorm. Yeah. With, like, stuff you have in a dorm. Yeah. Well, it, all he had access to was the stuff that you could fit in a dorm. Hand tools, anything out of a... Out, anything out of a, a big box hardware store. And it... You know, go to Lowe's Home Depot. If it was there, that's what he had to work with. And, and it... Oh, that was just amazing. That, that was amazing, amazing stuff. And there, uh, one kid, uh, limited tooling. I, I want to say it was like 14, 16. Exactly, Beast. He was like the epitome of work with what you have. Yeah. Uh, th this kid was like 14 or 16, and he took a sheet of plywood. Because that's what he had in his budget. He took a sheet of plywood, and he cut it down into strips. And then... Did a bunch of cutting and gluing, cutting and gluing, so that way he could create a plank with a herringbone pattern. And just made this amazing looking herringbone patterned strat, stratocaster, with a sheet of plywood. Like, that's what he had. He had a sheet of plywood, clamps uh, for power tools. All he had was a, a table saw and... and a table saw, a sander, and a router. That's it. And, and so it just phenomenal work all around. Um, and so this year, this year, for for the Great Guitar Build Off 2021, um, Ben Crow, the the founder of Crimson Guitars, made the Great Guitar Build Off its own entity. And there's three different competitions. There's the Invitational, which is pretty much what the original Great Guitar Build-Off was. Uh, ben inviting a panel of people. And this year's panel includes the winner of the unofficial Build-Off. Like, they actually, they had so many entries that he ran it down into a top ten. And the, the, the winner of the top ten is a... Uh, Woodwind repair tech who built her second guitar in the shape of a cow. It was so cute. Yeah, it, it is. It is also I, I, random yeah. trivia that we haven't mentioned uh -oh. that is important. Uh, all the original great guitar build off 
you had to auction your guitar off for charity and yeah. that was part of it that so was it wasn't even it. just ooh cool guitar for me like you had to be doing something for charity and yeah. have a charitable organization stuff like that and in those he talked about and highlighted all these different people's organizations to help other people which was also a really especially yeah. with all the sad of 2020 yeah. nice to be like hey let's talk about these good things that are happening and something that's going right in the world yeah so so somebody did one for a clean drinking water project somebody did one for guitars for vets um just all all that level of stuff too and whatever it auctioned off for that's uh you know that money minus whatever overhead costs went to charity and the nice thing is is that uh a lot of them took advantage of the fact that if you set it up ahead of time with ebay and i didn't realize this was a thing if you set it up ahead of time with ebay they will waive all the transaction fees for the ebay auction if it's for charity I mean, there, there's hoops you got to jump through ahead of time, and it's got to be a registered charity. It just can't be, uh, yeah, this is for Bob's Bill Collection charity. Uh, it's got to be a legit, a legit charity. But still, uh, I, I, I think even though eBay is not always awesome in that, they, they are, they're, they're pretty awesome. East, if you or anyone else wants to see any of these, go to Crimson Guitars' mm -hmm. YouTube page. They have an Instagram, uh, and they have links to all of it. He also did some short-form videos if you're, like, into seeing the end results, yeah. but you're like, yeah, I really couldn't care less about Hours of Sanding. <laughs> uh, well, then... to, to, to be fair, nobody, nobody, <laughs> nobody videoed their hours and hours of sanding. We all know there was hours of sanding especially if you've ever done any woodworking at all. Um, I, I, I don't want to mention how much sanding I've done lately. Um. <laughs> True, but the <laughs> point is, if you're not interested in seeing like the really nitty gritty of everything that yeah. happened, he also did for, I think it was like the top 30 or something, he did some short form. Uh, top 10. Like real quick oh, run yeah, through yeah, yeah, top yeah. 10. Oh, right now now I know what you're talking about. Yeah, it was... It was... Yep, where he just kind of like ran through the top 30 real quick yeah. so you could see like the highlights of everything and that was kind of cool, but he put links and like there, there are resources for all of it. There's links to everybody's videos. So... A lot of people started their first YouTube channel because of this contest. So it, it's... Yeah, it, it was probably one of the best things. So for the Great Guitar Build-Off 2021, he's got the Invitational, which is what the original Great Guitar Build-Off was, and he's got two different uh, two different ancillary competitions. There's a kit-building competition, which is what I am going to be entering in, where you start as a kit-build. You, know, you, you go to, like, the fret wire. Or, or somewhere like that and get a guitar kit and then build it and customize it and do all sorts of cool things. Um, like, like put a magnetic holder for your slide, which is what I'm thinking of putting on mine. Um, it's a thought. Ooh, we could make a gadget guitar mm -hmm. and have like a space for all your guitar and gadgets. I, I was thinking about, about, you know, things that I could do a little bit different. Like a Swiss Army guitar. A Swiss Army guitar. <laughs> Only if I paint it red with a uh, cross on it, or is that that going to get yes. me in trouble with? Uh... Duh. No, like that, that's a, that's a requisite. <laughs> no, no, I'm wondering if that's going to get me in trouble with uh, you know whoever makes the Swiss Army knife. Just and all contact them in advance and have them pick the charity. <laughs> but uh, so there's the kit building, and then there's the actual like scratch build. Like, I found a plank of wood and cut away everything that wasn't a guitar. Because one of the things that Ben noticed with the, the 2020 contest was that you had people who were building their first kit competing with people who were doing like very... Like, there are a lot of legit uh, luthier yeah. shops yeah. that come to do this. Um, I, I think one of the more interesting ones was that this guy took pallet wood. Just little one by one strips of lumber from pallets, and he broke the tops so you get the spiky jagged edges, and set it so that way all the spikes were up at the top in a nice block of wood, and then he flooded the top with resin, 
let it cure, and then cut out the guitar. So you got this really neat effect of the spikes of wood projecting up, but it's a resin top, so you're not going to actually hurt yourself or anything on it, and it looks amazing. So you got people doing that kind of stuff, competing with somebody who uh, who, who went to, you know, a uh, uh, budget guitarist or... Actually, let, let me make sure I say the, the actual website right. Uh, I have... I actually have a whole... No, 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 I don't want all 21 open. I just want to find the shops. Um, guitar Fetish. Guitar Fetish is another good one. Uh, solo. Uh, the Fretwire. Howard Core. Luthier Splice. Crimson Guitars. All Spark. Uh, where is it? Stu Mac. Uh, Stu Mac. Uh, mm -hmm. there, there's some Stu Mac stuff. is the gold standard for guitar stuff, but because Stu they're the gold standard, they're priced like the gold standard. Yes. They yes. have amazing stuff. They have amazing they stuff. Bargainmusician.com. That's the one I was thinking of. Bargain mus Bargainmusician.com uh, has some amazing do-it-yourself kits. Uh, one of them looks very similar to the kit that I got from Stu Mac and built about this time last year. Because when I was contemplating a career change, uh, I used some of the money from when I sold my house to pay for the tools and a guitar repair course. That's part of what got me the job that I'm at now, learning to repair and refurbish violins, violas, cellos, and all that. Uh, because I took those guitar courses like, oh, so you want to work on stringed instruments? I was like, yes, I'd like to work on stringed instruments. And uh, so <laughs> and began the beginning one of quarter one. violin. <laughs> <laughs> Say that again? And then you met the one quarter violin. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and you know what's even worse? There's a one-tenth violin on the back shelf that I know I'm going to have to work on at some point. Uh, th these things are so tiny. They're so tiny. And Reyes is going to go, and they're so cute. They're, they're not cute when you're trying to prop up the sound post on them. It's like trying to prop up a, a, a cocktail stick in a flight bottle. Don't, don't, don't laugh like that. Seriously, it's not funny while you're doing it. <laughs> uh, I think you got your mic muted. Yeah, he does. I said it's not funny for you. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, I mean, it, it, it is an amazing thing. And uh, I got the kit that I'm working on from the Fretwire because they were the only one that had something that I wanted to work on that was in stock. I noticed that everywhere that I went, uh, just so much out of stock. And I don't know if it's because a lot of these kits came came off the literal slow boat from China, uh, or 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 there's just that many people getting ready to build kits that these companies were not ready for what was about to happen to their inventory. Um, I, I consider both of them very viable options. And, uh, yeah, so look for some videos on my YouTube channel about that when I get there. Because that, uh, sorry, I just realized I'm going to have to figure out how to light this corner, too. But, yeah, that, so, so there'll, there'll be more, there'll be more on that coming out soon. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to release videos as I film them. Or just keep filming during the build process and then release like a 20 minute compilation video. Uh, that part I haven't decided. I know I'm going to auction it off. Um, because what I want to do is I want to get two practice builds in before my final competition build. Um, my only. Uh, my only thing is that I want to set it up so that way um, I can use the first practice build, the profit from that to pay for the second practice build, and the profit from that to pay for the actual competition build. That, that's my hope. And maybe to pick up a couple of the tools I need along the way. Because uh, I don't know if you've noticed this. Tools ain't cheap. Yeah. Nope, we aren't. Like, oh, wait a oh. minute. <laughs> Are, are you are you seriously going on about that? 
<laughs> hey, Reyes started it today. That was a lot of kavats in a conversation. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, uh, and, and let me rephrase that. Quality tools aren't cheap. I bought what I thought was a budget set of files. I thought I was getting inexpensive files. I actually got cheap files. And that is all the difference. Because there, there, is, there is a difference between budget and cheap. Oh man, is there a difference? <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> I was going to say you're laughing, but I'm not laughing because I've, I've run into a couple of things where it's been like, you know, I should have just spent the money, you know, the good money out front. And so for some of these for some of these tools I am definitely trying to save up because um, you know, I, I know we know some people who absolutely adore Harbor Freight, but uh it's not it's not always what we're looking for. Yeah, that, that's probably gonna be the way that I put that. going to toss in here now that all being said one of the other really kind of cool aspects of the project is i know i'm probably not the only person who after seeing all of the different nonprofits and stuff like that has kind of started brainstorming like hmm what kind of npos like could i get involved with what kind yeah. of that kind of thing could I do and we've actually been like, like not hardcore but kind of like low-key on the back burner even brainstorming kind of a dream project that we would love to once we have the extra budget to invest in and start up uh come up with some cool you know non-profit organizations that focus on doing stuff like this yeah. with people's hands and helping people who need that experience I, in their life. Yeah, I, w I wouldn't mind trying to work with Guitars for Vets on building the guitars instead of just, uh, I say just, I don't I don't mean it like that. But you, you know what I mean. Helping, helping. I'd also love to talk to them about expanding not just for vets because I love veterans. Don't hear mm -hmm. them saying I'm originally from military town. I'm about as pro like soldier as you're going to find because I know what those guys do and work through and I also know that a lot of them weren't these shining people looking to make a difference. They were young dumb 18 year olds who didn't know what they were getting into until they signed a four year agreement. <laughs> and I, I love those guys, but because of my family background and the experiences of a lot of my friends, I would love to find something that included first responders because they also yeah. end up in some really broken situations, both mentally and physically from their job serving others. And they could use some help too and, and some love. The, the idea is that playing a musical instrument is an excellent form of therapy. So it's just working with your hands. So yeah. even if you don't want to play or don't have any musical aptitude, something about working with your hands is really good for people. It, it is certainly meditative. Until until somebody's staring meaningfully at your production sheet, then it's not meditative. <laughs> <laughs> but but in all in all seriousness, uh, I I don't. I know that I mentioned it on stream, but I don't know that I've done it recently. I, I think the last time I mentioned it, my, my stream audience consisted of my two moderators and Beach Duck. Um, I, I worked in healthcare, uh, not direct patient care, but in staff training for 14 years, uh, at the end of which I might have burnt out just a little bit. That's an understatement. Uh, I... I was burnt out, uh, so I went on sabbatical, and that's, yeah, the long and short of how I ended up here in this. Um, I forgot where I was going with that. 
did it have to do with my whole thing about helping people in other situations than your traditional um, what you see on the news? It and mental health and yeah, woodworking something, something and mental health with your hands uh, being happiness. <laughs> yeah, it, it is really nice to to be working with my hands again instead of uh, the the mental work that went into my old job. And managing some of those projects too. Like, I mean, I currently because I, I'm doing this as a as an employee who has a certain level of production. There, there's that part of it, but uh, it is still. It's nice to build something. It's nice to have something that, at the end of the day, I can point to and say, "I built that," or as as more is the case for what I'm doing right now, I fixed that. Some of them, there's more of a heavy sigh before that I fixed that. But, you know. Yeah. That's because you're learning. No, no, it's because it's because of what I had to fix. And how I oh. had to fix it. <laughs> because sometimes because, kids don't... Because sometimes kids. Uh, not just kids, <laughs> their parents too. Remember the sad like, case of the cello that got run over. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Do, do you want to tell that one, or do you want me to? I can tell that one. Okay, tell, so, go for it. I had a kid walk in the doors back when I was working at a music store. And if any of you have ever met a middle schooler, you know that when they walk up to you and the first words out of their mouth is, I want you to know it's not my fault, you don't really believe them. Because nine times out of ten, it is. <laughs> and I had a kid walk in the store and come up to the counter and boldly tell me I just want you to know it's not my fault and I kind of looked at her like okay and shortly after her father walks in and says yeah no it's it's really not her fault and puts on the counter what I perceive to be just a cello gig bag empty because there is no mass visible mass or at least not significant amount to a normally massive instrument and they proceed to tell me that see what happened was in effort to teach his daughter responsibility he made a rule that he would bring the cello to school if she brought it to the vehicle but their vehicle was a hatchback and she was a middle school girl and she could not physically lift the cello into the back of the vehicle. So the compromise was if she brought the instrument to the rear of the vehicle, he would put it in and then it would come to school. But if she couldn't be bothered to bring it to the rear of the vehicle, it was not dad's responsibility to remind her that her cello needed to come to school with them every day. And dutifully, this child who loved her cello brought it to the back of the vehicle every morning before they left. Except one morning, she did her part and dad forgot his. And he backed over her cello. Yeah. And ran over it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Fortunately, uh, our policy uh, did cover accidental damage. And uh, by my reckoning, that is literally all of the definition of, an accident. of accidental damage. <laughs> um, a genuine accident. Yeah. And uh, so we ended up exchanging that child's cello. <laughs> and uh, getting them a new one because there was no manner of fixing nope. what happened to that cello. Sometimes things are just broke. <laughs> and the really fun part of that story is many years later, like six or seven years later, I was working behind the counter and had a customer challenging me on why they paid a monthly fee for maintenance. And this is an example that I used all the time. Let me tell you the sad saga of the cello and that they didn't have to pay anything else at all. They weren't responsible for anything. We just literally, I went to the stock room. I handed them a different instrument. I coded in the serial number done. They went home that day with a different instrument. And that is why you pay an extra $5 a month for that um, and other things. It just so happens that as I begin that story, 
the kid, now a college student playing cello, comes up and goes, yeah, let me tell you, and finishes the story for me. And come to find out that child later ended up working for our sister music company uh, and told oh, me after the part. customer left that, yep, uh, she ended up working for our sister company and she used that example anytime in the exact way, same way I did any single time she thought somebody wow. was like, oh, I shouldn't have to pay for this or this is dumb. She's like, no, 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 no. You, Not you, dumb. you need this in your life. <laughs> I promise. My dad appreciated it. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it, it was one of those awesome full circle, and she, to the best of my knowledge, even after college, she didn't end up playing professionally or anything, but music will be forever a part of that kid's yeah. life because she fell in love with the instrument. Yeah, there there have been a lot of wonderful stories in, in the music end of things. Um, while I was working for Rayest, <laughs> which was kind of an interesting s scenario all in itself. Uh, while I was working for Rayest, I had the privilege of watching the final recital for one of the amazing students taking lessons at that particular store. Um, he had been there for a very long time, learning and mastering the piano, enough to get a scholarship, enough that his recital performance was an original composition that he wrote for that performance if i remember correctly for that performance yeah for that performance and just you know some amazing amazing moments um and not just any scholarship it was to yeah. a prestigious competitive yeah school of music to yeah. be a performance major for piano so uh, I, and I, this was, I'm deeply enjoying being a part of that. Um, while I'm not teaching them the lessons, I am repairing and maintaining the instruments that are allowing those stories to happen, and that has been very beneficial. Um, of course. If if you want to have a little pick on Rayest moment, you can ask her about the viola that she rented to her future teacher. Oh, no. that was so wonderful and awful. <laughs> and actually, it was a violin first. Oh, it was a violin and then we first. I thought it was a viola. viola. Yep. No, I thought it started nope, off. Nope, he as viola. started on violin. Wow. Nope, he started okay. on violin. And then decided that he did not love violin, and about six months later, switched to viola. And that was when he was in fifth grade. Uh, I had just started at that music company. So he was one of the first kids that I ever interacted with when I was like released to like publicly talk to customers and all that. <laughs> and I did that. And a couple of years later, when he needed an upgraded instrument, I sold him his upgraded instrument. And a few years after that, when he needed his like legit performance level instrument, I sold him that one. And he always, as a kid, told me, you know, one day I'm going to be, you know, one day I'm going to be a music teacher. One day I'm going to be a music teacher. And lots of kids say that. Like, it's a great sentiment. But then oh. one day they learn about bills oh, and no, no, want no, no, to no. be able to actually pay them. Um, um, hang on. We, we have we have guests. And. Oh, and uh, yeah, then then that thought. <laughs> They go, oh, wait, never mind. Um, but in this case, uh, one day, a uh, few, few, quite a few years after I'd sold Billy his last instrument, um, and he's public on the internet and everything, so I don't okay. feel bad about using his real name. Um, <laughs> dude, he likes karaoke too much. Check, you know, <laughs> he has videos. <laughs> um, he uh, calls me up one day and, you know, I just answer the phone in the store standard reading and all i hear is miss rachel i just walked off the stage can i teach for you now and he had literally that afternoon gotten his diploma as a music teacher because we did require that all our teachers actually have a degree in the instrumentation that they were teaching and that was the phone call that he made and yeah 
Hence, uh, of course, I just like I laughed and was like, sure, kiddo, like, come on over. We'll interview and talk about it. And he was one of the only people who called me miss because it makes me feel old. <laughs> um, and as I had to explain to other people, he was the only person who allowed to do that because he'd been doing it since he was 11. <laughs> And became her teacher. Voice yep, and viola. became my teacher and to this day still teaches at that store. Nice. Uh, voice, uh, viola, a little bit of violin. Um, but viola and voice are his primaries. And exceptional performer, performs on the side. But he likes teaching and loves helping kids learn how to play their instrument. Um, I think your, uh, castle lost his, uh, shirt in that assault. Oh. No. So, yeah, it is definitely, there There are parts of that work yeah. environment that are absolutely amazing. And some of the interactions and remembering that for a lot of those kids, while, yes, it's a retail sales environment and it's like any other retail sales in the world... For them, it's the first time they held their first instrument. And for a lot of kids, that is a very big moment. Yeah. Even though for us, it's the 357th rental of the season. <laughs> uh, I was thinking more of it, it's the... Uh, it's the greasy pizza that you're scraping off of somebody's viola strings because... The only way you can think of getting that much something gunked up on the strings is that they had a school pizza every day. No, a school pepperoni <laughs> pizza every day before playing their instrument. No, you're not thinking uh, like a high school or middle schooler. <laughs> you, you don't want to have know. the pepperoni pizza. You used it because you forgot your bow. <laughs> uh, no. No, 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 no. Icky. That, that's not how that works. That's not how any of that works. <laughs> Have you met these middle schoolers? Um, I mean, <laughs> look, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. In that, some, some of the, some of the stuff, some of the stuff I'm cleaning off of these instruments really makes me wonder. Like, uh, there's the saxophone <laughs> case that looked like somebody had let their cat, their cat nest in the saxophone case. Um, how about the cello? gig bag that somebody had let their cat urinate in it. Uh, that well, was not yeah, fun. That, too. that was not fun. Well, at least it's a cello and not like a clarinet, because it, I mean, one of these goes in, in your mouth. I'm just... Uh, well... Oh, don't. Okay, I'm gonna gag. Don't you even... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna say anything. I, I'm just gonna quietly, quietly sit over here and, uh, mine some crafting. Oh, this one time at band camp? <laughs> yeah, no. you joke about that, but... Musicians do some gross things. Yeah. Like, when the kids' read is black because oh, of the mold, oh, because uh, they never took the read off uh, the mouthpiece, and you look at them and you're like, yeah, um... I you, you know, need to change your read. And also, how old are these cleaning supplies? <laughs> my kids have been having oh, yeah, a lot of respiratory trouble here lately. Well, gee, I wonder why. You only got mold growing, like, so thick. Uh, oh. um, it's obscuring the airflow of your instrument, which is why you came in in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, or or the time that you, you put the... the tuba in the sonic bath and, and a uh, critter. A dead rat comes a, out? Oh my that, I, I no. was just going to oh. leave it at a critter floats out, but yeah. No, it was a dead rat. It was Not a dead even rat. a mouse. It was a dead <laughs> rat. <laughs> Did they not taste it? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I like, cannot make this stuff up. Some, I keep some, telling some of the, the things, head of some the repair the, shop. Man, some of the tales from the shop. She needs to start a channel. Some of the tales Things from I the found shop. in your case. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. 
Uh, yeah, no, it was it was a rat. Uh, we we were we were hoping it had passed before we put it in the bath. Yeah. That, that 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 is a hope that we had. Um. Yeah. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> oh, just yeah. Yeah, I, I don't even know where to go from that one. <laughs> just, I don't think there is anywhere you can go from that one. Actually, we can, case, <laughs> we can just make a comment. We can just make a comment that, and you guys, audience members, thought that the two people who have been in the medical field actually taking care of patients would have the grossest stories on this channel. I'm well, just saying. Look, look, don't don't challenge them to a contest. <laughs> Don't challenge them to a contest because they're going to, I know Medic and Arcadius are going to go hold my coffee. And, uh, <laughs> uh yeah, well, there's, there's that. I just because, love these swords over there yeah. like, not a critter, don't edit this. <laughs> it's a rat. <laughs> I mean, and I, just some of the bizarre stuff that gets dug out of, oh, <laughs> uh, my, did I just, this is a family friendly stream. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Uh, well, because uh, the person I'm mentoring under did pull <laughs> uh, pull out some items that I will not repeat on the stream <laughs> from various cases uh, that really make you wonder. Uh, but no. Bear in mind, you do strings like violin, viola, cello, upright, bass. Yeah, I know. If you're drooling on, if you're drooling on your violin, you've, you're doing something wrong. Um, yeah. No, so some of the some of the like some of it's just weird. Like he pulls the violin out of the case and it starts rattling, which is never a good sign. And so he's like, "Okay, the 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 sound post is falling down. All right, I have to put that set that back up. Not not that big a deal." And then he comes over into mine, and he, my my office, and he goes, "Hey, so what do you think is happening here?" And he shakes the violin. Fallen sound post? He goes, nope. Sound post is right there. The bridge had fallen off, and some individual stuck the bridge through the F-hole and had it rattling around inside the body. What? Or erasers and trumpets. I cannot count the number of conversations I had with children who brought in their instrument because they like to play a game. How many erasers can I fit in my trumpet before they get stuck? Oh! And every time I look at them and I go... You, you, you mean like the uh, $800 decorative bead? Yes, exactly. Where it's just like... But at some point, in order to achieve the goal that you have... You have to get a thing stuck in your instrument. What part of this was a good idea? Yeah. Um, and every time you get the look of a middle schooler going, huh, I hadn't thought of that. <laughs> a middle schooler hadn't thought of that. Imagine that. Um, no, I, I worked at a, a different shop in the same company previous to where I'm at now. And I, there I was... a. Uh, a detailer. I did the final cleaning and inspection before uh, Woodwinds and Brass made it back out to the rental fleet. Um, and I'm watching our brass technician work on this trumpet. It's got a wheeze to it or something, trying to figure out what. And so he, he, he's trying to fish out what in there trying to look in he, he's he got an endoscope that he runs down the inside of the trumpet doesn't see anything so uh, gets to the point where he's got to start desoldering it and you got to realize if he's got to pull out the blowtorch to unsolder and resolder a joint you're talking 100 to 120 bucks a joint so he had to go through a number of joints to find this itty bitty little decorative bead like the kind that goes on a bracelet or something that had gotten stuck up in this trumpet. And uh, no, that was not covered. So somebody just had a very expensive bracelet. Um. Uh, 
So, you know, there, there, there's the funny and the frustrating, and the uh, it's only funny after you've gotten through the frustrating uh, <laughs> kind, kind of stuff. Um, are the zombies out above me, or is there a dark space somewhere around here? No, they're out above you. Okay. I'm just checking. Because I hear them, and I just don't want to, like, poke through a wall and have a zombie eat my face. Okay, well, if the goal for this project was just to get enough stuff that we had backlog to sell off to Home Skillet Von Schnitzel, mm -hmm. I think we have achieved that. I is he an official Von Schnitzel now? I don't know. You got married. <laughs> okay. Well, it sounds like there's one nearby, too. Yeah. <gasps> there's a Von Schnitzel! I'm so going to update the data pack so they spawn in with wandering von schnitzel i <laughs> i've got to figure out if that is a thing now um for for reference my degree is computer programming so doing some of the uh edits and updates to this sort sleep, of sleep, stuff. Sleep, 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 I'm in the middle of the tunnel working on your project. Arcadius Medic, all the things are trying to eat my face. Why? <laughs> and they come underwater yes they well, yes do. they do yes they do <laughs> all those things never mind i should... I... <laughs> <laughs> okay there is a mob. All right. Let me back up so I get all the terminology straight. Uh, an entity that is not the player is referred to as a mob. There's hostile mobs, passive mobs, and neutral mobs. Um, one of the passive mobs are villagers. There's a special type of villager called the Wandering Trader. He randomly appears in the game and has a limited inventory of items. Uh, we have a data pack that I customized. Van Vanilla Tweaks published the initial data pack. I reprogrammed it to do some of the stuff that we wanted. And so the Wandering Trader uh, sells uh, little Anon Junior heads and little Medic heads and all that sort of stuff and mini blocks. So they're, they're basically... Uh, for the game mechanics, they're heads that are reskinned as miniature versions of uh, the different blocks. Like there's a mini wool block and a, a, or sorry, a mini red wool block and a mini blue bull, wool block. Um, somebody is fond of giving all the different mobs various and sundry creative names. <coughs> Rest. So. Apparently, the Wandering Trader is now a Wandering Von Schnitzel. Did I get that right? Von Schnitzel. Von Schnitzel. He's von Austrian. Schnitzel. He's Austrian. Okay. <laughs> don't don't ask. Don't ask. I I just didn't know when he got to become Austrian. I thought I heard. Oh no! Happened today. Uh. If you take a really close look around, you'll find two leads and a bunch of leather. No, I found a Actually, lead. Actually, it's a probably leather. because I just watched, like, t like at work, I was watching a parody video of um, <laughs> In Sound of Music, uh, the song that the kids sing when they're going away oh. for the oh, evening. Seriously? What? <laughs> yeah, but they did a COVID parody. Bit. Oh, okay. I know. I know the one you're talking about. Because these are a yeah. few of your favorite things. No, not that one. Uh, no, it was the ones um, where, like, the kids are going. Uh, there's a sound and a clock, and it's going away. Cuckoo or whatever. Okay. Nope. Not familiar with that one. It's cute. It's by the same person. Oh, and and. Beast Lord, all this background music is straight out of the YouTube creators library. Or um uh McLeod's uh Incomptech. 
Um, I know I've got a link to it somewhere. I think it's buried deep in the archives of anonjunior.com. Almost certainly buried deep in the archives of anonjunior.com somewhere. Not somewhere over the rainbow somewhere, just somewhere, somewhere. But sometimes, some, zero, zero sometimes the home, random, right? huh? Were you trying zero, to? Zero, zero is home? Do you home not have your compass with you? by 300. I do have a compass. I don't know where it's set up to, though. Uh, just just head for answer. 480 by 340-ish. That'll get you in the right ballpark. Yeah, and I especially for Minecraft, I don't I don't do the background music on games revisited because I like having the in-game background music for that. Uh, just for for Minecraft, it really feels a little bit better to have different music, uh, and that may just be something that I unconsciously picked up because when I started thinking about it, I noticed that all the other U YouTubers and live streamers that I watch for Minecraft content. They all have some sort of other background music. Uh, either they do what Medic has done, where they light, you know, they get the Pretzel Rocks license, um, or or they get some other license from a different service. Uh, I I went through the YouTube Creators Library and found stuff that that I liked. I, I like stuff with a little bit of bluesy, a little bit of jazzy kind of feel to it. <laughs> what was that for? A little. That that, that 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 felt like a very pointed. A little. Okay. Yeah, a little. Just a little. Okay. Uh, and I do like rock and roll and that kind of stuff. Just not uh, not the, not the dubstep. Not the not the holy mother of hair metal. I mean, I do like hair metal, but not not as background music. So not the uh, stuff that I play. <laughs> <laughs> no. But I, I don't mind it in other people's streams. I don't want to do it for my streams. Does that make sense? I gotcha. Yeah. It would require you to have hair. You're not allowed to play it. There's I, licensing I, law. No. No. That, that's not how that Medic works. Medic doesn't have hair either. I, I was getting ready to say. Uh, oh, totally random, but oh. I found a totally awesome beard maintenance comb. <laughs> I wasn't sure if you would use it, though. <laughs> okay. We were talking well, about that, hair. I, I'm sorry. This conversation shifted without a clutch. Like, like somebody skipped No, we gear. were talking about hair. Like... We were already near that box. <laughs> wow. But there's an electric heated beard maintenance comb to give like less frizzy and puffy to your beard hair. And I found it and you it looked really cool Lord? and I was going to get it for you, but you I know. wasn't sure whether or not you would use it. I, I mean, apparently what we all need is, is a less, frizz, less frizzy, less puffy beard. <laughs> Sorry, I'm still recovering from that ball that hit me out of left field. <laughs> but dude, if you saw the videos of people using this, and not like the promotional ad one, the like I like real like, like hey, I am a person who bought this thing, and let me show you me using it kind of ones. Like it's awesome. It makes you look like ooh a thing. I might be in your home. It makes you look um, like ooh a thing. <laughs> <laughs> it makes you look like ads. <sighs> Like, like a picture of someone with a beard that somebody actually curated. Like it makes it look nice and not like I, you know, not not like how I normally do. Is, is that what you're gonna say? <laughs> but you don't but... do anything to it. You don't you don't do any hair care maintenance. Well, no, I keep it short because it's all stuck in a mask. You know, eventually I will I will start letting it grow back out again. Just you know, having all that beard stuck in a mask all day is uh. No. No, I'm not feeling that. All right, Beast Lord, would like to know what this Beast magical Lord, product is. Beast Lord, I'm totally is. pulling up my. I am totally pulling up my Amazon because it's in my cart right now to ask you about it. 
<laughs> I'm not even playing. I know you're not playing. That's why I'm laughing. <laughs> Beard straightener for men, and there were a couple of different ones. And when I did some research, it really like um, uh, the one that I picked because, was by Admiral. Because, because you are a moderator, you should be able to post a link in chat to it. Oh, that's super cool! Hold on, I have to. I, I may regret. So I may regret giving you this power, but you probably will. It's okay. So you say now. We'll, we'll see. It's okay for me. <laughs> it's okay for one of us, I'm sure. Uh, dupe. <laughs> so anyway, I did some research. There are a lot of different price point ones, but all the ones that kind of have this model and design, they're built in the same factory to the same specs. Yeah. <laughs> so why would you spend money for the dumb expensive one when you can buy the cheaper one that... Yeah. Uh, cheaper or less expensive? Because after oh, this one, this is less expensive. A, after one of the chillos that came in today, I was reminded of the difference between cheaper and less is, less expensive. Like instead of an ebony ebony fingerboard, it had a painted pine fingerboard. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. It was sad, and we felt sad for the owner. We felt sad on their behalf. So, I mean, I'm just saying, would you try it? I don't know. I'll, 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 I'll look into it. No promises. That was said begrudgingly. Well, I, I do use the beard oil that you gave me, rather pointedly, I might add. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever are you talking about? <laughs> uh, you giving me a pointed gift? Why never? It would never happen, I say. I've never given anyone a pointed gift. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, the beard oil does help. It it, uh, it does help a lot. It, it cuts down on a lot and of the itchiness. Especially, you're playing especially with heat, the masks. Anytime you're playing heat, use the beard oil first. <laughs> because it'll help moisturize and prevent split ends, just in case you wanted to know that. Because I have so much experience with split ends. I I'm glad I know these things. Well, someone in this stream actually seemed interested in my knowledge, so <laughs> you can go play with your lighting. My lighting? This is your project. <laughs> this is your project. <laughs> you are the one who wanted this. <laughs> I mean, I can stop right now and go go back to something else. You are not amusing. Go back to How come it's daylight and the lights are on? Because I, I need to make sure that I'm actually getting the signal where it needs to go. Ah. So I unhooked it from the daylight sensor and hooked it up to a switch. I mean, it doesn't look bad. Would it be easier for it to just be on during the day? Uh, we'll find out. Uh, it depends on if it lags up the server every time it switches on and off. But I, I wanted to—I wanted to at least get it set up first, because if not, I can pull up a whole bunch of redstone, and then we have lots of resources again. All right. Um. I—I I, I don't know why I'm digging up so much of this. It. it started as such a simple project. Yeah, but then we got involved. But it's so pretty. And now we have more coral than anyone needs ever. I don't know about anyone needs, because every time the wandering trader wanders up, uh, you, we, we all, we all seem to very, uh, Intently go see what he has for offer. His name is Von Schnitzel. Von Schnitzel. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alright. So this is the corner. Where's the other end? Uh, there we go.
Oh, we're, we're back to already dug out. Okay. You know what's the one... The one? ...bad thing about me using my mailbox as storage? What? Finding stuff? I never get that moment of, ooh, I got mail! <laughs> Yeah, yeah. If if only somebody had a storage system. Well, someone had a base. Speaking of that, I, I did go ahead and move your panda over to the lagoon. To the lagoon? The... Like the blue lagoon? Sea. Is he over... Is he hanging with a blue oyster cult or something? Mm-hmm. Something like that. All right. Well, I brought back all of the stuff that you were supposed to help me with, so fair is fair. <laughs> oh. I filled up these boxes. What are you talking about? By yourself? Well, no, not exactly, but to bring back the mm -hmm. uh, the conduit? No, I didn't. Um. <sighs> Might need to go get that. Hey, medic, so what are you working on? <laughs> oh, I'm just sitting here minding my own business. <laughs> I'm working on that same project. Funny that. Hoping that I'm not the next one targeted. <laughs> About to go friendly fire, friendly fire. <laughs> PvP on! Oh, man. Can that be a thing for like two seconds? What, friendly fire? Um, yeah. <sighs> decisions. Yeah, yeah, decisions. What kind of friend do you want to be? <laughs> Honestly, I, I've been looking at trying to find a way to do command blocks and set it up so that way we, we could section off a PvP arena. So if anybody on the server actually wanted to do PvP type stuff, you you go to these coordinates and work it out there. Not it. <laughs> I'm down. But I I haven't figured out how to how to make that work. Cuz there's only but so many hours in a day. I'm learning. I think we just need to turn it on. Um, leave the game rule on. That way we can make things like capture the flag arenas and stuff. But that's a question we can bring up for next season. Yeah, that is that is something that we can we can bring up for next season. Um, and and I yeah, because on the one hand we did that mostly because we kept accidentally hitting Rayest because she had that Jack Skellington skin. And we kept thinking it was a skeleton <laughs> that was behind awful. us. Uh, <laughs> that was so time. frustrating. Every time, every we time, around, she ah, was... a skeleton. <laughs> Whack! Hey, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh, and she doesn't myself. know how to eat, so she never regens health. So it doesn't yeah. matter how quick you are to start flinging stuff at her. You nick her with anything, and she dies. Yeah. Why are you killing all this coral? So that we can have some of the gray stuff. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> the... They can, they can kill it themselves when they need it. You don't start it. But but but. but... <laughs> Sorry, this conversation has just uh, taken an unexpected detour. <laughs> it's just I land and there's like this field full of dead coral. Oh goodness. Uh, dead brain coral. Uh, my brain is a little dead, yes, thank you. Um, I, I was trying not to <laughs> overly emphasize that particular part. <laughs> so I'm not normally one that really cares whether or not something is symmetrical. I hear a butt. But... Mm -hmm. Now that I'm up here trying to get this tower to line up <laughs> at the top with the plat the AFK platform, it is very frustrating. Are you sure the AFK platform is symmetrical itself? 
the AFK well, platform. I'm uh, the one that moved it, so the you know. Yeah, the center of the platform is centered on the center of the creeper farm, which is off-center from the rest of the building because the rest of the building was not um, of center. an appropriate width. No, no. Uh, the the sugarcane farm and everything below that has an even number of blocks and you can't center a one block wide center on an even number. <laughs> what? What are you laughing about? <laughs> just just the difference in builds. You build everything in one block centers, he builds everything in two block centers. Uh well it's it, it wasn't a choice. Uh the, it's the way water works. This is the way physics happen. Uh physics doesn't physics. care about your aesthetics. Um, this... Physics needs to get its act together. <laughs> <laughs> well, you just rewrite the physics of the game, and then... Mm -hmm. And then what? No, no, I don't know. We go to Mo Yang and submit a bug report and go, Hey, uh, we <laughs> we've, we've fixed this. It's fixed, right? <laughs> I was better. waiting for you to say something crazy like I'll, I'll implement it or, you know, something like uh, if you put all the lamps down, I'll I'll put the redstone. Oh no 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 no! I I, I don't I don't I don't do such <laughs> silly things anymore. Come on now, I'm smarter than that. <laughs> no. You're not gonna make that it. mistake twice. <laughs> I, I I try. I tr I don't always succeed, but I try very hard to only make the same mistake once. Do we have a gravel farm? Uh, ish. The the piglins in the in the nether uh, gravel is one of the things that they will give you for gold. There's quite a lot of it out there. Uh, don't careful. A because I don't know how much of that gravel medic is grabbed, so I don't know how much is left. Huh? I haven't grabbed any. I've really? been using my own supply. So, <laughs> what do I need to bring gold? to trade with them? Gold bars. Just Where do I get those? They the like gold. gold. The piggies that fall from the sky and die, they give you gold. Yeah. I've well, they give you gold nuggets. Feature. You have to craft those nuggets into ingots. <laughs> I, I hear you thinking. I hear you thinking over chat. I wasn't thinking, I was counting. Seven, eight, five, fourteen. No. Twenty-eight. Seventy-two. Okay, so I go to the piggy place. Mm -hmm. Where's the piggy place? Where's the platform? Oh, there it is. <laughs> Where's the platform? Oh! Where is the giant platform that takes up most of the sky? It's not giant anymore now because Medic's giant water cooler's in the way. Oh, oh, that platform. I thought you were talking about the actual platform in the nether. I was like, how do you not see that? Okay. Uh, so I see gold nuggies. I don't see gold gold. gold. Nuggies. Yeah. Well, the gold nuggets turn into ingots. And you give them to these angry people here, and they give you all the stuff on the floor out here. How come there aren't many nuggies? Because nobody's been upstairs to idle for a while. Yeah. Hey, you're here. Go upstairs and idle for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh. W weren't you just getting mad at him for, for not idling? Or, or for being idle? Or what? Weren't you just mad at him for well, being idle? Well, if he's going to be idle, we might as well do it well and for a purpose. I wasn't even idle. I was doing projects. I've completed like three projects today. <laughs> Have you seen my my uh, headroom that's attached to your guys' bedrooms oh, in no. my base? No, no because I, I had to go finish our other project by myself. You should go look at it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh? No, uh-oh. Uh -oh. 
No. Uh -oh. Negative uh ohs. Uh oh, is the How do I trade kind of... with them? Oh, you punk. Uh oh. Uh, what's happening? I'm being attacked by phantoms because I am the one that didn't sleep this time. Oh. I was about to say, you can't blame it on Rhea. She's in here with me. <laughs> uh, where's oh. the stuff that they're throwing? Put it up here. Hmm? Oh, did you figure it out? Okay, the stuff they're throwing goes into the hopper and then it automatically goes into the sorting array here. Okay, so I put the gold in there. I push the little button. Okay, and they're getting it, and they're throwing stuff on the ground, and the stuff they throw on the ground automatically goes into the sorting array system that's sitting right here. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Hmm. We'll make that work. I need you. one of these. <clears throat> what? Oh. <laughs> yeah, we have a ton of gravel out here, by the way. What was that? Like, four, four double chests? Five? Is it full? We had a ton of gravel out here. Yeah. Well, it's not full, but... Because we have two rows of it, I think. But it's almost filled one row. Oh, nice. Not anymore. Here, let me, uh... Not anymore, okay. Just, just for kicks. Let me take a peek. Is there a random... How do I turn them off? What do you mean? You don't. Do I push the button again? No. No, you gotta wait for the gold that you put in to go through. Um, well, okay. there, there, is, there is a way to turn it off. But it's not easy. But I don't have to push the button again? No, you, you keep pushing the button okay. again does nothing. Um, although you shouldn't have left that in running while not there. Why are you I'm sleeping? Closer. I'm not sleeping. I'm stuck in the cobwebs. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm stuck in the safety netting. I, I, Would I, you I, like me to help you? No, no. That's why they're there. They're 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 there for the flight challenged. What does MB mean? Okay, there there is no gold left in the system. She didn't leave it running. Oh, she didn't leave it running. No, there's okay. none. In it. I just checked it. All the way down to the dropper. Yeah, no, no, no. I was more worried about um, the the sorting in the back. Hmm, that's that's true. I don't know anything about that though. But what color concrete do you need? Uh, gray and cyan, and it looks like a non went off line. Hmm? No, it didn't. No, he's still up. Uh -uh. I'm in the nether. No, I was watching the stream. It looked like it, it said you were offline. Oh, because it's... Light it gray or gray gray? It's showing on my uh, monitor over here. is excellent. Gray gray. Yeah. I okay. still have you, so... Yeah, you're back up now. Ah. <laughs> <clears throat> but I have plenty of concrete. I thought you said you needed more. Well, I'm making it as I go, so I don't have a ton of extra. But I've got sand and gravel inside the concrete maker, as well as <laughs> the dye I need for it. Oh, so what, like, like we didn't there. like we didn't need the gravel out there in the main storage area. No, this is true. I think we're down to the last chest down there, our primary storage center. Oh goodness! Nice. Thank you. That's a lot of... I didn't realize that the gravel had been uh, piling up like that. Mm -hmm. I'm delightfully happy. Don't don't hear it. I'm not saying. Uh, we, we've been dipping heavy into the nether brick, too. Uh, I was expecting more quartz than what it's been yielding. I know I know we got, like, blackstone for days. Yeah. And that that's leaning very heavy into building. And we still got nearly four double chests. Uh, the oh, obsidian. I haven't used it for any building yet. No, that's not true. My my guardhouse is made out of yeah. it, but that's a small build. The, 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 uh, how about the building the farm is in? That's all blackstone that came out of this farm. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know then. <laughs> I should probably top off the uh, ender pearls while I'm here. Yeah. 
Yeah, we got plenty of arrows. We got some. Oh, well, we got iron nuggets. Better save them. Want to hear something very exciting? Uh oh. Maybe. The pink princess dress that I got from one of my friend's kid is on its way. Oh. <laughs> I still can't believe you're doing this. I thought she was your friend. She is my friend. So why why are you why are you doing this? Why are you doing this to her? I'm confused by what you mean. Medic, <laughs> I swear for a second, I thought all these sea lanterns were snow. And I was like, man, we got this high enough that it's actually snowing on it? In the middle of a plains biome? Yeah, do you see my conundrum? Oh yeah, no, I, I exactly know your conundrum, because this is one block wider than that. Yeah. Yeah. From the ground, it's going to look okay, but when you come to the top, it's going to be like, uh... I mean... The, the the other option is you try to give it an intentional lean, like a leaning Tower of Pisa kind of lean. Mm, no. Nah. The, then it looks like you meant to do that. Or or you kind of make it uh, wobble a little bit. It, you can't make concrete that's no particular color? No, it has to have a color. <laughs> Annoying. Ooh, speaking of all right, I didn't realize it was 9.30 already. <laughs> the, Does that mean now is a good time to say peace? Uh, mm -hmm. that, I, I'm definitely considering it. We got a lot of, we got a lot more lighting done. Not nearly as much as I thought I was going to, or I was hoping to, I should say. Because we still, we got, we got from the community center entrance down around mm -hmm. here. All this mess. We, uh, I can fill that in. There we go. I can fill that back in. So we still got this path down here. The straightaway is going to be the easy part. Digging it out is not going to be the easy part. And then it's going to hook up into that path going all the way. Oh, great googly moogly. Who said, what idiot said they were going to light all this up? Oh, <laughs> hi. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> uh, I got to finish up this little bit here. I think... I think I'll just keep pulling the signal from here down to the bridge and then light the other half of the bridge from the signal that's coming out. Oh, uh, thorn bushes. That from happened a lot when I was there. laying everything down. What, the, uh, the sweet berries? Yeah. I mean, they look wonderful and, you know, they're great for a snack. Um, just don't walk too close. Yeah. Mm. All right. Let's see if we can get a uh, view from up here. Because I did leave all the lights on for the moment. That is. That does look like an impressive amount of work now, doesn't it? And those lights ringing the path. Uh, when I'm done, we'll turn on when it gets dark outside then turn back off during the day or at least that's the theory that's the thought that's the plan oh i still gotta get that last little bit of path over there all right um i i dare say this season's community center is a lot bigger than the last season and this is only with four people. <clears throat> the, the change between three and four. Well, oh, don't What's don't forget happen? to don't forget too that um, our our trading hall was a little more vertical. We we and we had everybody in the same hall. We didn't have a wool farm last season. Uh, our storage building was a little more manual. 
um, and therefore didn't take up quite as much space. It was also vertical instead of yeah, you know, yeah, sprawling. Sprawling. Uh, our point our is... smelter our smelter system was a little more modest than that right there. Um, the the creeper and sugarcane farm was <laughs> wasn't even a quarter this size. Uh, it was just a, a very small farm that I had tucked into the corner of my build. Same sorry. Thing, same thing with the melt. No. What, what, what are you talking about sorry for? We need to build it bigger next season. Oh, you have a problem. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have a problem, or yes, we're going to build it bigger? Yes, I'm already trying to decide on how big I'm going to actually try to make it. Uh because I'm, like, I'm thinking, I think, map. I'm thinking if we change the layout of the sugarcane farm, we can fit more sugarcane in there. Like, like have oh, have yeah. you seen what Impulse SV did at his base for a sugarcane farm? Like, if we were to get multiple blades of sugarcane farms across in a massive building, and then get a quad creeper farm on top of that. Oh yeah. Jeez. And on that overly optimistic note, I'll say thank you for joining along. I hope you had fun. Uh, we we do this every Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. U.S. Eastern. Uh, we try to have the full crew every time, but some of our work schedules don't always allow for that. Um, replays will be available on YouTube. So if you want to get notified when we go live, definitely hit uh, the follow on Twitch. And if you want to see the replays and some of the other content that I have coming out, like the Games Revisited videos, um, or, you know, watch the live stream as they're being recorded. Uh, either way. Either way works. And uh, the guitar build videos will also be on my YouTube channel. So subscribe over there if you haven't already. That way you'll see them pop up in your subscriptions feed. Uh, hopefully I'm going to have a guitar video out very soon. As soon as I can get this bench off to my side cleared off and uh, uh, like an actual amount of workspace in my workspace that's the plan uh, maybe this weekend <laughs> so uh, definitely going to have some good things coming there either way and uh, if you like if you like what you see and you'd like to help out uh, you know doing the follow doing the subscribe uh, there's also live.anonjunior.com that is a place where you can tip or donate, whichever whichever way you want to think about it. I mention it every now and again because uh, servers servers aren't free, unfortunately, and uh, and and it would be nice to to feed the memory habit, <laughs> the server's memory, not my memory. Uh, there's there's no helping that one. So you you said it. Thank you. I appreciate what? it. What? <laughs> huh? What? What? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, so that is that is all the things to pitch and promote. Uh, I do I do post links on anonjunior.com, the mostly up to date website that I run. I, I'm gonna try to do a little bit more with that in the coming year. Uh, I'm finding that despite having more projects to want to do, there's the same 24 hours in a day. It didn't expand any, so. Uh, we'll, we'll see what we can work on with that. Uh, and with all that said and done, I hope you had fun. And, uh, oh, you know what? I, I should probably be a better... Uh, I, I need to get better about reading people and that sort of thing. Let me, uh, let me see who's... Ah. Links. Yeah. Um, none, none of the channels that I had, that I, that I would feel comfortable sending people to are up. So I guess I won't be doing a raid after all. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to pass on those two. All right. So. I guess with this, I will uh, say thank you. I hope you had fun, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>